Everybody, welcome back to the No Rights Podcast. I'm your host Ben, aka No Rights, aka check out my that, Tumblr, check out my aka, AKA that handsome guy who's getting interrupted by his ghosts. It's it's one of those days. <laughs> uh, we're doing an early show because I guess Ian has a date lined up. Probably, I don't know. Everybody wants to come yeah. in and say hi. <laughs> hey, so, Nate does too, so like, hey, you gotta, you gotta hey, do it well, man. Well, all right, well then, let's let's get this show on the road. Nate's back there. Let me see Nate. Hold on, hold on. No, no, he doesn't want to get on camera. I can't, man. No, Nate is he still a mystery shot. wrapped in an enigma. Anyway, so let, let me just introduce everybody. Joining us as per usual, my co-host and good buddy Ian. How you doing, Ian? Hi. Shot of Soko. <laughs> okay. Uh, joining us also at Ian's domicile is our good friend of the show, Nate. How you doing, Nate? Good. How you doing? Oh, you know, How keeping you on, doing? keeping on. <laughs> Uh, joining us, joining us as well, my twin brother and arch nemesis, Franklin. How you doing, Frank? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. And also joining us, uh, he was the last one to join the call, so I guess he's the last one to get his introduction. He knows who he is, Doug Russell. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh, uh, yeah. It's a full, that's the former Walmart employee right there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> well, not for two more weeks. Oh, well then. That's a soon-to-be former Walmart employer. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Ah, fun times, fun times. So, gentlemen, how's it? How's it hanging? How's everybody doing this week? Good. Yeah, I'm good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. With my tumbler. Pretty good tumbler. Pretty good tumbler, Ian. <laughs> hey, you guys, check out my tumbler. You wild and crazy guys! Check All right. out my Tumblr, please. Oh, right. you just so, ruined it, man. You soiled it, man. A dirty thing. Do you like my Tumblr? Check out my Tumblr. All right, so let's let's play a little catch up with everybody. See what everybody's been up to. Starting with Doug. What you been up to since last time we saw you, Doug? Well, I uh, got a new job. <laughs> got a new job. Yes. Thank got a new hair oh, Got speak. a new job. <laughs> Uh, he needs a haircut. Job with the Tumblr. I'm working with Tumblr. I'm a new job. Oh, you're working with Tumblrs? Cool. No. Um, I actually got a job working in another retail establishment. So I'm going from Walmart to Dunn Sports as a manager. So. Sportsman Doug. Yeah. You're going to wear dicks or something? No, uh, Dunham's. Dunham Sports. Uh, yeah. I think Recall that store? I don't know. Never, so, uh, never seen it. Never been there. <laughs> they're they're a smaller company that's like going through some expansion. So where do you live? Well, in Kent, Ohio. I think Kent, we're actually Ohio. Your, your way, but uh, they're apparently they're supposed to be putting in like in another like hundred stores within the next three years or something like that. So you might see, end up seeing one in your area, but they're 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 kind of like. They're, I don't want to say they're like a like a Ollie's or anything, but they're more of a discount style sports store. They get all the brand names, they just get them in at pretty good prices and stuff like that. So, mm. Mm. so what what else you been up to, Doug? You been uh, writing any books, coding any video games, uh, making any movies? Uh, yeah, you make any uh, video games over the weekend? With uh, with the way it's been the past week, I haven't got a chance to do much, but um, I've I've restarted some more work on my uh, on my book and I still have some more writing to do on the YouTube slash short story so um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to get done since I'm going to be in training here but I still got I, I want to have um, principal photography for the YouTube slash short story start by the end of the year 
I wanted to have it by the end of this month, but it happens. <laughs> yeah, well, all right then. Well, good, glad to hear you're keeping busy. Good, good luck with the, the job. Keep us posted on that. Let's move on now to Franklin. How you doing, Frank? Doing all right. Tell, Lady, tell us what, tell us what you've been... This is a landmark day, by the way. This is a landmark day. You can actually see all of Frank's balding head. <laughs> let me just Daisy cut back to... Sugar let me just cut back to uh, Doug's camera here. and uh, <laughs> I mean, I hate to tell you both, but uh, the forehead brothers, you guys are... Uh, that ain't a forehead, that's a five head. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome to Male Pattern Baldness with uh, Doug and Frank and... Uh, no, Doug used tail and mane. It really works. <laughs> All right, so... I'd rather, I'd rather have a, a five head than a hydra head there, frankly. Fun fact, <laughs> yeah. fun fact oh, in, in, during the Renaissance, a high a high brow was considered a, a sign of class, and people would actually shave a little bit of their head to have a higher forehead. You mean like they do in those... Uh, what does that have to fucking do those with Those kung fu... What is that they do in those kung fu movies where they got like a ponytail in the back and shaved up They the don't front? cut it. Until they lose. All right, so Franklin, what you been up to since yeah. the last time you were on the show? Oh, just playing that ass to the Fallout. Mm -hmm. So you're surviving the apocalypse. I, uh, you mess around with that creation kit yet? No, I've I've been just uh, running around and playing uh, vanilla. Um, I've actually. Haven't d d done any of the DLC. I signed up for the beta, but for uh, survival mode. But I want to level up to like a high ass level before I even try with that. That's right, boring. Vanilla is boring. Well, that that's the definition of vanilla. Yeah. Uh, all right then. Well, that's a uh, sounds exciting, Frank. Glad you're having fun. Moving along over to Ian. Yeah, my man, what you been hey. doing since last show? Hey. No. Uh, I've been doing... Uh, I've just been... I've been doing some coding and stuff, hanging out with Nate a little bit here. Um, just kicking back. I was... He helped me set up a, some more of that uh, Cody shit with the... Uh, uh, I've been going to, like, the... I admit nothing. The... Awesome <laughs> it's... it's Cody is perfectly legal. Um, yeah, it, it, just it, just on the source. it just depends on the source that you stream from. Right, right. Um, There's but, plenty of legitimate ones. Is that stream it's all pretty sources? Good free alternative. Plugin? Is that is that is that a good one? Uh, right? it pro it, I think it has some uh, 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 questionable sources, so let's not talk about that one. Okay. What about the Navi X? Uh, I think that falls in the same gray cloud, so, uh... Yeah. <laughs> next right. topic, next topic. <laughs> yeah. So, how, 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 things oh. been, how things been going with you gentlemen on the, uh, the ladies' front? Because I, I know Ian's, uh, been seeing a lady on the regular lately, and, uh, sounds like Nate's got a... ladies' night. <laughs> you guys, are oh, you guys double dating and, uh, taking them to the same... <laughs> same girl, same time. Oh. Faster uh, that way. Uh, makes sense. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> no, nah, I'm. I'm going on a date. Uh, tomorrow night, just to her house, you know. Uh. I don't know what Nate's doing, but he's perfecting his chloroform. <laughs> oh. Oh, I perfected that years ago. <laughs> I That's used your recipe. Yeah. Oh man. So anyway. How about how about you, Nate? What have you been doing since last time we saw you? It's probably been a while. Um, been I've been messing while. around with Blender and 3D Coat, and I'm still pretty bad at them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mean Ian hasn't taught you to be a 3D master yet? No. Yeah. Uh, he's a. Uh, he's got to make that. He's got to figure out how to do a lot of that stuff because he's gonna go crazy with the 3D printing, man. <laughs> he's got well, a lot of adventures. He's telling me he's, he's figuring out these secrets and stuff that he's never seen on the internet that you could do with 3D printing. 
Yeah. I mean, it's oh, crazy. I'm sure Nate has plenty of his uh, 3D printing hustle planned out, just like he has with yeah. everything else. Right before the show, Frank and Nate were talking about Steam trading cards. and uh, Yeah, hustling trading cards. Yeah, hustle. listen to, listen to that story. It's like, I think Nate's a busy guy. <laughs> He's going to... Oh, oh, you pay a yeah. dollar, you get a Steam key. Oh. Oh, there you go, Frank. Uh, oh, God damn it. Oh, man, that, that's such a trap. Don't fall for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got it for free, so. Oh, it has DRM. Uh, anyway. So, uh, fun fact Did you know that DRM exists in your Curie coffee makers? Yes, we've talked about that on the show before. That's, like, ancient, man. Yes, there's also DRM on, on cars too. Didn't we talk about that recently? Was it tractors or was it the like OnStar or something? I don't know. It's weird, yeah, man. it's weird. Yeah. Well, we were talking about that thing with the a long time ago. Frank actually got into the discussion about the the cars where you can't hack your own car or whatever that you paid for. Oh man. Yeah. And as for me, I've been working on my next uh, short. And on to news. I've I've been working on my next short. I've been doing a lot of research into old Fleischer cartoons, so I'm gonna watch a lot of uh, Bimbo's Initiation and uh, Swing You Sinners and stuff like that. Wow. Cartoons that cartoons that you watch it and you go, "What did I just watch? <laughs> what just happened?" <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know the Cab Calloway shorts, Old Man of the Mountain. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, oh, yes, fuck. Franklin. Shit. Oh, uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. Oh. <laughs> this is how you know Frank's doing something other than oh. being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> His poker face Ooh. is not very good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, bid. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh shit! Wait. Yeah, he's definitely updating his grinder account. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe he's just fighting creepers. Did, did you hear about that? They have a site called Thrander for threesomes. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Why not? You only live once, right? <laughs> so anyway. How the hell? I think we've lost Frank, at least in mine. So let's. Let's go on to the news. Ian, what do you say? Eh. The news with Ian and Nate. Check out my Tumblr. Nate doesn't have a Tumblr. I know. Whoa, it's Streamfinity. New world order. In a stream where things just keep zooming in. Stream set. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. He's blowing my mind. Extreme close up. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Camera one, camera two. Camera one, Come. camera two. All right, are we okay? Are you? Are we good now? Are you? Don't you see my? Don't you see my screen on you? I, I can see your see screen flickering back and forth. Check out the screen, Check out the screen. Oh, okay. We're gonna. I'll have to do it from this one then. Okay. Uh, All right. it, yes, Doug, after much teasing, guess guess where uh, Ian's first news story is coming from today? Hey, it's Cartoon Boo. Hey! hey. What the hey. shit? That's right. Uh, hey. Hey, well, I'm a fun game. Everyone deserves a first time, I guess. Let him be gentle, Ian. Feels so, like the first time you got the touch. All right, tell tell us about different song altogether. You fucked it up. I was talking about the touch of you know the you know 
Anyway, tell us about With Amazon. Off- tell us about Amazon offering animators a new way to make money from online video, Ian. Okay, in a major development for independent content creators, Amazon is inviting all creators to post video to to its Amazon video service and earn royalties based on hours streamed. The service went live today, and that was of uh, May 10th. Um, Amazon Video Direct ABD is a self-service platform that puts the e-commerce giant in direct competition with video sites like YouTube and Vimeo. ABD makes video content available for free to all Amazon Prime members who uh, number in the tens of millions and pay creators based on the amount of time the content is streamed. In addition to streaming, ABD provides other options to creators. Uh, content can be made available to rent or own, viewable for free with advertisements, advertisements or packaged together and offered as an add-on subscription through the streaming partners program. It says, it's an amazing time to be uh, a content creator, said Jim Freeman, uh, Vice President of Amazon Video in the press release. Uh, there are more options for distribution than ever before with the Amazon Video Direct for the first time. There's a self-service option for video providers to get their content into a, a premium streaming subscription service. We're excited to make it even easier for content creators to find an audience and for that audience to find great content. Uh, launching aside this new system is the ABD Stars program, which will distribute $1 million every month among the 100 most popular ABD titles in Prime Video. A monthly bonus is in addition to any other revenue earned through the program, and everyone who uses ABD is automatically enrolled in uh, or enrolled to participate. AV, the ABD launch partners include a mix of both established media brands and online media producers, among them. Uh, Con Mass Entertainment, How Stuff Works, uh, Samuel Goldwyn Films, The Guardian, Mashable, Mattel, Style Hall, uh, In Community, Josh Business Insider, The Cinema, TYT Network, Baby, Einstein, and it is, there's, there's a bunch of other ones. Like, I mean, so, yeah. mm. what do you think about this band? I mean, you're the animator, so you should. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I was going to include this one before I saw Ian Links. Uh, I looked it up and I, f- I found a review of it. There's a couple of review sites, but uh, there's a video review on USA Today about it, where they the guy says they say it's supposed to compete with YouTube and quite it's more it, it's really kind of more competing with like you know professional video places a little bit more like vimeo i guess you know more like because because basically if you already have prime then it's just you know more content you can stream so of course amazon wants to get on that because people are paying for prime they want to have more content to stream makes sense but they said to upload a video it's not as simple as YouTube, where you just upload the video, change tags, and go. It's like with this, you have to fill out like cast listing and a lot of information to the video. So it's a catch. Well, I think I think it's a good sign that you know alternatives and places. It's just a matter of will people actually watch it as much as they watch YouTube? Uh, I don't know. It remains to be seen. We'll see. So, what are your thoughts, Doug? Well, I think it's not just for. For animators, I mean, obviously, with uh, spots like it's using Machinima and Business Insider, that's actually going to be more open to like everybody. You know, almost like how YouTube is open to everybody. Uh, well, so, someone like me, if I really wanted to, like, say, for instance, say, scrap the, you know, certain portions of the uh, uh, the short story, and just go mainly actually shooting video and you know professionally editing it and, and putting it up that way. It, it could actually be the start of something really big for people who are like on the independent scene and, and can't catch break. You know? Well, it, it, this is a big story on Cartoon Brew for specifically because animators have been getting the short end of the stick on YouTube because the way the videos are weighted for minutes watched rather than just viewing. 
you know, so... I, I kind of want to know what the algorithm is for, for Amazon's system. Because, I mean, the algorithm for YouTube was fantastic for us creators up until a couple of years ago when they're like, well, let's go ahead and treat this system like this and then do this and this and this and then fuck all you people. But, <laughs> we talked about before with the Reply Girls, you know, that they'd come out with a video to a popular video and it would get downvoted, but they would still get, rake in money because of the way the system was weighted. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, that's what happens, you know. I mean, you know, things like Patreon got started because the people that run, that had, that create stuff, they'd be like, this video can be watched by thousands of people and make $40. They're like, there's got to be a better system than that, so... Anything that provides alternatives that might get successful and something blossom from that, I'm all for. So, all right. You, Frank, you got any opinions on that, Frank? Huh? Are you still on the show, opinions? Frank? Hmm. What do you What do you think about the whole Amazon yeah, yeah, thing? I was, I was just fucking with my microphone. Uh, more stuff to watch. Cool. Will it catch on? Who knows. <laughs> Oh, deep. What about you, Nate? What do you think about this? <laughs> well, like, are the people on YouTube just going to put it on there, too? Like, the people who do the regular stuff? I, I don't know. It might be an exclusivity agreement, at least in principle. Well, I think it would make more sense to put it exclusively up there, because if you get paid when people view it, why have it in a place where people can view it for free versus where people are, you know, giving potentially giving you more of a cut? Because like if they're already a Prime member, they're already getting the content for free. They're, you know, I don't think this will sell any more Prime memberships. Nobody's gonna go, oh man, if PewDiePie makes a, a channel on here, I just have to. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, he's got he's got that sweet YouTube red money. Yeah, yeah. And apparently he's got a fucking game. Too. Yeah, well. Well, I hear like Twitch, like you can't stream in uh, 1080p unless you're uh, you have a like a. Uh, 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 you're a unless you're a, well you have to have a channel to do anything but you mean like a unless you're a partner, a partner or whatever yeah. and to be a partner you have to have like a thousand plus subscribers so. or something isn't it like ten I don't know some weird thing that I'm never gonna they'll have, know so. you're a partner if you got the sweet purple twitch shirt okay well, well how about you Ian what are your thoughts on the story well I mean, I guess it looks like it could be a good thing if it, you know, like, hopefully the creators, yeah, will get a better opportunity than, like, a place like YouTube, you know, because we've discussed over and over again how bad YouTube is for a animation, you know, as far as trying to make a living, you know. Well, the YouTube money isn't as good as people think it is. You know, it's not 2012 anymore. Yeah, it's, it's really not. Well, just it's not for people in general, but let alone trying to make uh, full length animations and stuff. That's uh, especially bad. Uh, honestly, the YouTube money isn't bad if you're if you're part of that fucking snake algorithm that they have. If you get if you get something that's like really viral, it's going to link back to your video, and eventually, if people start watching, it's going to start auto linking to other videos on your channel. Yeah, pisses me off. Cause I mean, I made like one or two videos. Oh, you watch, and then all of a sudden it's like, do you want to watch every single video this jackass ever created? No, you don't. Well, here's yeah. more videos of this jackass that you're never. No. Gonna watch. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just like, come on, man. Yeah, I hate that. The algorithm is fucked, and it's skewed. All right. Speaking of skewed, I'll you might like this shitty on. video. They came out four years ago. Let's move on to Ian's <laughs> next news story. Apple stole my music. No, seriously. <laughs> Read that. Ah, Siri does it. Go, go ahead, Ian. Okay. Uh, so it says this guy talks about how you know, music was really like stolen and deleted and stuff by Apple in in this article, and this, it says, uh, the software is functioning as intended, said Amber. Uh, wait, I asked, so it's supposed to delete my personal files from my internet internal hard drive without asking my permission? Yes, she uh, replied. Uh, so I'm guessing uh, 
Amber is uh, like a tech support person, I'm guessing. A bitch. Uh, I had just explained to Amber that 100. Hey, Amber, are you a bitch. <laughs> yeah. uh, that 122 gigabytes. Gigabytes of music files were missing from my laptop. I already visited the online forum. I said, and they were no help. Although several people had described problems similar to mine, they were all dismissed by condescending gurus who simply said that we had uh, mislocated our files. Um, and so I had the free drive space to prove that that wasn't the case. Um, that or that we must have accidentally deleted the files ourselves. We hadn't. Amber explained that I should blow up these dismissive solutions offered online because Apple employees don't officially use the forums. Evidently, uh, that honor is reserved for lost, frustrated people like me, and at least in this case, know-it-alls who would rather believe we were incompetent or lying than face the ugly truth that Apple had uh, vastly overstep its uh, boundaries. Yeah, that's that's um, basically the support forum is whatever you have an Apple problem. Um, well, well, yeah. Okay, I, I really hate to interject here, but um, did you read the actual uh, article on Yahoo that explained why this happened? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that there was an Apple article about it recently. No, but it's it's a it's an article on Yahoo that actually was talking about it. Um, basically, this person is pissed off because Apple Music deletes your files. Okay, but the thing yeah. is, what this person fails to realize that when that person set up Apple Music, there is an option to where if you are uh, low on storage on your device or something along those lines that you have to give Apple Music permission to do that. This person in a fit of rage doesn't seem to, uh, to realize that when they went through and set up their Apple Music account it gave the Apple Music and iTunes permission to delete those files. And this is why. When yes, you start well, for Apple Music... That's what the article goes they didn't on have drive space. Yeah. But... But that's the thing is that this person's all angry because it's all after the fact. In fact, when you sign up for Apple Music, you're giving Apple permission to do that when you set it up. So this person is all pissed off for no reason because they don't know how to to do the one thing that most people fail to do, unfortunately, and that is read the terms and conditions. Okay, Doug, so you're saying that this person's pissed off because they do something that most people do, so most people are just stupid now. That's, that's yes. your answer. Yes. So, that, is the, that, is, that is the only answer. No, that's, because the, he's also there's also a part in the story where it says the matching, how it'll match. You have a rare live version of a track or a different version, and it'll just replace it with the studio version. So that's also a thing. And just the fact that... Right. And just... What happens when you let automated systems manage your your laptop or manage well, your, your library? Well, here's the thing, Doug. Well, this this whole thing it comes down to a, you need to have a much bigger sign that says "Warning: We will delete your stuff" because people don't like their stuff being deleted, Doug. Just well, saying. I, like I mean, black stupid. And no one no reads it, man. <sighs> they well, agree to have their asshole so to someone else's lips, man. Yeah, and all you have to do is click ignorance, on a button. It's not like you're even signing not anything in blood. Ignorance is not an excuse. Oh, I didn't read the term, so I'm not responsible. Just wait till Doug rages about something. I go, you didn't know what you agreed to, Doug? And you know what? If I if I sat there and did not know what I agreed to, then it's my fault. Uh, it's like when yeah, people sign but... into your contract for a phone and don't realize that if you don't get insurance, the company will not replace your phone for you, and then they're angry because they didn't get insurance. Do you not know what you're what you're signing up for? Well, the problem is, is all these the, the agreements on here. You pretty much do have to be. No, uh, wait, 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 wait. Person isn't gonna like hire a lawyer just to be able to understand. Uh, all the okay, I want to talk to Doug about something. Sure. Okay. So if uh -oh, here so we when go. you if you. You're, you sign up for the terms of use, so you're agreeing to their thing, otherwise you can't use their thing for that. But what do you think of when they're like... I haven't, I haven't read specifically if it's like an option. 
that. Oh uh, no, I'm I'm saying like, well, what are what is your opinion of like, um, if they up they're able to update their contract after you've already signed it? That depends on the terms of the original agreement. If it says that we can change things with or without your permission to. Uh, you know, if it's a legality where they're allowed to do that, then they're allowed to do that. You do see just, that shit in uh, you, you actually, all the time. I know. It's just like, it could be like, I don't know how I feel about that because, like, sure, it's in the contract and you click the button, but, like, it could be like, okay, um, our new contract says that, um, like, past monthly fees, like, you could, you could add anything into the contract. So you're, you're essentially signing, giving them the right to do anything, right? Yeah, that's, you are. Essentially, that's, 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 that's like when you that's, sign up for things like your uh, your um, online gaming, like your PlayStation Network or your Xbox Live. It's, no. it's in there that they have the right to terminate service with or without notice. Doug, right. Doug, Doug, can I explain something to you? Just because they you agree for them to kill you doesn't mean that they have the legal right to do that, even if you signed it in blood. I, I will say that because some of these agreements Remember, they that they come up with this. the con no some of some of the contracts if they like there are certain things in court that they do not hold up. Yeah, it's it. it yeah, absolutely. It's not they don't have the right to delete your files. This guy explains on here that a lot of his custom made music that he's made in uh, his own software and everything was deleted. They don't really have the right to be able to do that. But I will say this: until you dispute that in court can't do anything. Yeah. If this person was so angry that Apple deleted his, his music and his information, why are you going to go out on a blog instead of go to court and say, this is what I've created using my own software, and now you've compromised that. When you yeah. sign up for the service, you're putting your information and the discretion of your library into their hands. And all of a sudden, if something happens that you don't like, now you have an issue. I have no sympathy for you unless you go to court and say, I dispute this, I want my music back, and I want to be reimbursed for the time and you know, the inconvenience of doing this. Until someone says, okay, that provision is no longer allowed in your contracts, thank you, have a nice day, you know what you're getting yourself into. It, it, thank it, you, please. It's hard to think of, well, I'm not happy with it, but I'll agree to it anyway, and then I'll be pissed off later when they actually do what they say they're going to do. If it's sitting there in the term saying that they will do it, and they do it, how can you be angry? Doug, I hate to disagree with you, although I do it quite often, but I will just say, you can't just say, let them bury stuff in the terms and then it's your own fault for getting mad. It's like, tell me if you've read every terms and agreement, you know every detail of everything you've ever signed, because I know for a fact you haven't. You don't know everything that everything that you've ever signed is going to do. Know what? But you know what? What? Any time there's ever, ever been something that I don't like about the contract, I don't, uh, and there's things I haven't liked about a contract I've signed, but you know what? That is my personal responsibility for not reading the terms and conditions. Now, well, in you, my you case, it, my, entire, my entire music library is on my Mac, and I have no intentions of using Apple Music. You know why? Because I don't want to subscribe to something that will compromise my own personal music library. And that's exactly what subscribing to a, a company that provides music is going to do. They're going to try to replace the music that I have. And I don't want to do that. There are some versions that I have on my computer that I like better than other versions that's actually on Apple Music and on Apple servers. I just so like to put this I, I just like to put this whole argument as a little footnote for the next time Doug comes on the show. Oh, I'm pissed off cuz this thing happened. It pisses me cuz it's all fine and dandy until it pisses you off cuz that's just what happened. This guy's pissed off about a thing and I'm sure no, it's, it's, it's not about it. I've never complained about a contract that I've signed that I know only signed. It's the simple fact of if you sign if you agree to terms and conditions and something happens that you don't like and you go back to those terms and conditions that you agreed to, you have no right to complain if you skipped over something that was going to happen or willfully ignored what was going to happen, and now all of a sudden it's 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 an issue because it happened to you. Well, can I say something? It happened to you. Uh, my, my problem is, is, I mean, this is just the, 
really, I did this article because it's a, a red flag for a lot of people because it's like you really do need a lot of these software agreements and everything. It's like you do need pretty much a lawyer to understand everything. And just because they stay something in the U doesn't mean they stated it clearly enough or that they, you know, that they could have been like some kind of secret message in there that you don't, you don't understand, you know. Uh, a lot of the legal jargon in there is very, it can be very vague. I mean, if Nana know. signs up for Apple Music and all of a sudden all her vi home videos of, you know, your, of her kid, her grandkids are missing, you think she's going to understand what happened? So wait a second. Okay, so right here, I'm I'm looking at this. Um, when I signed up for no, go go back to where it was. Okay. Okay. Um, well, where's that? Um. Yeah, let me. I'll link it in the thing here. Yeah, that way I'll be able to take a look at it. Okay. So, this person is a composer, from what I saw, if I'm not mistaken. So, this person has personal <laughs> personal compositions that they've made. Okay. Now, when they sign up for the terms and conditions, their entire music library is going to be scanned. And obviously, Apple will delete anything it does not recognize. So, let me pull it up here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Well, I just think I think we're just trying to argue, Doug, that this that what they're doing is wrong. Just because it's in there, if it's in there or not, it's it's wrong what they're doing. You know, like the your mouse stitch to the ass, that would be wrong. I mean, they should at least make it more obvious to the common person that, that certain file might yeah. go missing rather than bury it under right. so this and then you, and then yeah, have them be confused. You expressly agree that your use of or inability to use the Apple Music Service is at your sole risk. Apple Music Service and all products and services delivered to you through the Apple Music Service are except as expressly stated by Apple provided as is and as available for your use without warranties of any kind either express or implied. In no case shall Apple's director's office blah, 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 be liable for any direct, indirect, incidental, punitive, special, or consequential damages arising from your use of the Apple Music Service or for any other claim related in any way to your use of the Apple Music Service including but not limited to any errors or omissions in any content or Apple Music products or any loss or damage of any kind incurred as a result of the use of any content or Apple Music products posted. So, that did, that I will really say this that though, say that the there, is say, there is such thing as illegal contract clauses. This, I don't consider this, do you consider this a legal contract just by clicking I agree on this software? That I don't know, because I have to look it up. Yeah. But it's also something that's right there. Well, they, these people, they, for the article, they, they uh, highlighted these specific sections. I'm pretty sure that the actual... Agreement. If this was on page book. one of the you agree to, I I think it would, and if it was bolded like that, I'm sure people would have a yeah. much, you know, all that bolding and stuff is there, you know, there's for the article. I'm sure if it was on page one, your files may be deleted. Some people might take caution at that. This guy obviously didn't didn't notice that enough to make to have it phase him and not and now he's lost files. Rich didn't read it. Based on what, Doug? Based on the fact that. He's a composer. If he knows that his music is going to be matched up with something on Apple servers, because Apple Music is a constantly available thing, not just your computer. That's the one thing these people don't realize. When they say Apple Music is done to your account, not to your computer, not to just your iPhone. If you're sitting there telling me that, oh, well, he didn't know any better, bullshit. He should have known better, specifically because he was a composer. If he was a composer and did not have his uh, musical files registered with Apple Music, he should have known something was probably going to happen to them. So, okay, the, we got the other news so, so basically, here. I think Doug's, Doug's entire point of this whole thing is buyer beware. So let's move on to our next news story because I don't think we're going to get anywhere 
past this. And I've, yeah. I saw this news story floating around, too, so I'm glad Ian pulled it up. Brazen Kickstarter scammer promised a, a $100 3D printer built a house with funds. Ooh. By the way, I, I should add maybe that composer should have a real job just... occurring to, uh, according to Doug. <laughs> so t- tell us about this one here, Ian. Okay. The Peachy printer had high hopes why, way back in uh, 2013 when it first launched as a $100 3D printer that fits on your desk without breaking the bank. The project raised more than 600000 Canadian dollars and promised to ship the gadget within several months. Now its co-founder is telling backers that more than uh, 300000 Canadian dollars has been embezzled by a uh, a fellow partner and is urging backers to uh, contact the local police. Uh, in a tell-all video on the PC printer website, co-founder Ryan Grayson is explaining just what happened to all that money his company earned during the Kickstarter campaign nearly three years ago. Grayson explains, or Grayson, I'm sorry, <laughs> Grayson explains that this uh, nearly half of the money had been embezzled by his business partner, David Bowie, or Bo, as early as 2014, uh, uh, falling, failing to inform any backers until now. After the beat to printer Kickstarter ended in late 2013, Bowie and Grayson had nowhere to put all the money, so Bo uh, deposited the money into his personal bank account until a new uh, corporate account could be opened for the company to uh, maintain. After his account opened, Grayson claims that Bo only transferred $200,000 Canadian dollars of the money over keeping the rest in his personal bank account. By March 2014, all the remaining money in Bo's uh, account totaling more than uh, $324 Canadian dollars of had been spent. Um, so where did all that money go? Well, there's a house in uh, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Yeah, Saskatchewan. Right now that Bo Bill even money from the PT uh, printer cards Kickstarter. Grayson claims that Bo then uh, promised to pay the $324 Canadian dollars or shit. Um, with interest so that the PP printer project could continue development and ultimately fulfill its promise of delivering uh, three printers to its backers. Grayson even posted a video of Bo admitting to embezzling money and his conversations with him uh, to eventually recoup this so PP printer could pay its staff and buy the parts needed to build the printers. Now, two years later, PP printer is out of money. Gracie claims that Bo had repaid one hundred and seven thousand of the three hundred twenty four dollars he promised to pay and is working through a lawyer to negotiate the remaining payments. Grayson decided to finally go public with his information to his backers and urges them to contact his local police. Yeah. That's crazy. Right. Yep. It goes on, but <laughs> what do you want to say about this, Vince? Since you, uh, you were saying that you were thinking about doing this article, also. Well, I'd, I'd seen it, you know, because I follow people that you know run Kickstarters, and occasionally they're like, you know, you've seen plenty of the stories of of Kickstarters going south for for things, and this one still kind of, you know, a guy built a house with the money. Some people, you know, pay their rent with it or live off of it. <laughs> it's like. Oh boy. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, when the one guy says that the other guy put it in his checking account and and spent it, it's like, well, that right there is kind of a red flag. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, when when you when you sign on to a fundraising campaign, it's like you really need to pay attention to who you're, you know, giving the money to and that they know what they're doing with it. And sometimes uh, one person can just go, "I'm going to take this and uh, it's mine now." <laughs> So yeah, some dirty shit. Yeah, 
Um, what what do you uh, oh, think about shit. this movie? Because you're the one that brought this uh, to my attention, also. Nate. Hmm. Are you talking to Nate or? I said, Repeat that again. Sorry, I was reading. No. Um, oh, I was saying. Oh, I was saying earlier that um, like. You should be careful if you're defrauding uh, Kickstarter, but I, I later found out that uh, it they didn't cl classify as a charitable organization. They they classified as a uh, uh, oh I forget a benefit organization. Yeah, a for, for benefit organization, because yeah. like so you'll end up going to jail for a longer period of time. But it sounds like in this case he embezzled from the company. But if he's the president of the company, then he just stole it. No, it's it's a co it's a co-partner of it. So whatever. Then he embezzled. Yeah. So whatever. Somebody's going to jail. What do you think, Frank? Uh, fucking shit. <laughs> so, damn. Deep, deep thoughts with Frank. Okay. So what happens to the people though? The backers. Well, I imagine they're gonna dispute. You know, I don't know. I guess it depends on how the how that company decides to, you know, liquidate its its uh, issues and their refunds and all that stuff. Be a, uh, you know, I mean, the one guy's working to pay some of it back, so apparently, you know, that's gonna go to the guy who's who was in charge of the Kickstarter and the debt incurred from it. So, well, I thought you guys were saying the good thing about the Kickstarter is they have fail safes for this type of thing. Well, there's some things like this kind of thing, especially since it fell out over two years and it was an embezzling thing. I mean, you know, I don't know because if the guy is obviously dealing with a lawyer and legal problems for it, there's not really much they can do except you know see how much of that can get bled back into Kickstarter to pay it off <laughs> and refund the backers. So, I right. Don't know. Kickstarter might sue them for the money. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. I mean, but but then again, I mean, this guy's trying to keep the you know the game afloat, and say you know what I'm I'm trying to fulfill the original promise of you know, the Kickstarter. We're trying to get this going. But I, I think uh, it said in the article that he failed to mention in 2014 when the money had been embezzled to anybody. So it's like that's kind of an important thing when you want your 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 backers to support you is to be very transparent with what's going on. You can't just say, "Hey, my partner stole half the money, guys." It's like that's kind of a big thing that people want to know. Otherwise, well, you, you also have to think about legalities. That you know, if if they had some sort of an agreement with this guy's lawyer to keep things quiet if it, until it can be paid back. You know, there might have been some sort of a... a well, a, he could have still announced that, though. Um, he could have still said there had been some sort of partner splitting or something, you know, some, something. He didn't have to... He wouldn't have to say embezzling, but, to you know, to leave to leave people in the dark and then just go, hey, guys, there's no money to pay it back, so we're going to have to wait till we might get some of this back from, from the guy's lawyer. It's like, well... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just... I don't know. I always wanted to start my own Kickstarter, but man. <laughs> well, there's you a lot of things you have to get started. Huh? Huh? You just couldn't get kickstarted. Well, no, Ian, that does not deserve a, a, a symbol crash. That does not. Nope. That doesn't even deserve sad trombone. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. Well. All right. Let's move on to your your next news story. Judge, Star Trek fanfic creators must face CBS Paramount copyright lawsuit. Okay. Yes, this is uh, a lot of legal art, uh, articles today. But, um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Boom, boom. Dum, dum. Uh, okay. It's a quote unquote, yes, we will finish. X and R fanfic production company says. Oh, they should have um, been just for that name. That's horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. They should have just been arrested for that. Um, on Monday, a Los Angeles-based U.S. District Court judge ruled that uh, X and R Productions, a crowdfunded Star Trek 
fan fiction production company would have to face a copyright infringement uh, lawsuit CBS. Uh, the, I guess they have a PDF uh, from CBS and Paramount, which own the rights to the Star Trek TV and film franchise. Uh, in a blog post about the upcoming crowd dates, leader of Action Art Productions, Alec Peters, uh, seemed undeterred by the un, undeterred by the news, uh, writing, "I am happy to say, our trial got moved up to January 31st of 2017. That means." We could win this case and have Axe and R back in production in March of 2017. Yes, we will finish Axe and R! Exclamation mark. Uh, Axe and R Productions has already produced a short film called Prelude to Axe and R and has plans to make a high quality feature film simply called Axe and R. Argued in its uh, motion to dismiss that CBS and Paramount's copyright infringement. Claims are too big. A production company also contended that some of CBS and Paramount's claimed copyrighted elements, including costumes, the Starfleet uh, insignia, and uh, Klingon and the Klingon language, are the mood or theme of Star Trek, were not protected by copyright law. Illegitimate copyright. Yeah. Illegitimate. <laughs> Judge disagreed with the NASA uh, production company's arguments for the Mason. That I say that. Yeah, Nason. Uh, courts do not require copyright claims to be uh, pled with such a particularity. Uh, the judge said of Axnar's rebuttal that individual TV shows and films showing the copyrighted elements were not cited in the CBS and Paramount complaint. The judge also ruled that although some of the non-protected items cited by CBS and Paramount for copyright infringement might not be protectable on their own, the owners of the Star Trek copyrights would be able to combine those elements together to find copyright production if a jury agrees that Axnar production combine those elements in such a way that recreates the Star Trek world, quote unquote. Um, Axnar Productions has tried to argue that since its feature film hadn't been written or filmed yet, the copyright infringement. What the fuck? Uh, lawsuit agreed. Uh, lawsuit against it was uh, premature, based on a Peter's Facebook post about the Axnar project. CBS and Paramount is that Axon Production has a fully revised and uh, locked script. The judge ruled that it was plausible to believe that a final draft of the Axon script exists. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Yeah, they're losing it. They, they... Who, do you, who do you say is losing it? The stupid Axon Yeah, they, they, they're screwed. They're, yeah. they're willingly using intellectual property. Well, the insignia is copyrighted, isn't it? I mean, well, wouldn't that be trademarked? Yeah. So if they made it in a different way, then it wouldn't be trademarked. Like. But the thing like, is, okay. they're trying. Sorry. Like, uh, oh, go ahead. So, like, you ever seen an anime? They have like the McDonald's insignia, but it's upside down. We, yeah, but that's not the same as saying, hey, now we're a McDonald's. It's not like they opened up a whole different restaurant where it's McDonald's, and it just happens to have an upside-down M. That'd be a very different argument. That's just a priority. Right, right. That's just a thing. This is, hey, we're right, going right. to make a whole, you know, a whole fan film. Okay, so let me see. So, okay, so this is a, sh it's a different ship. They use numbers instead of uh, any identifying marks. Um, can I see the uniforms? Uh... They use solid color uniforms. Do they use the if they use the Star Trek insignia? If it is trademarked by law, then they're go they're they're they're, they're absolutely losing. However, it is kind of a check mark, but I haven't seen the uniform. You can't really copyright two color uniforms like that. But if they use the trademark logo, they're losing. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying that's like all if you want to get down to the letter of the law. It's like this is very obviously an, a, 
an attempt to infringe on the copyright and make something outside of the official brand. I mean... Hey, Ben. Yes, Franklin? This reminds me of uh, when that guy made a fucking movie with, like... Are you talking about that, that X-Men story? Yeah. And they're yeah. like, no shit, no nuts. <laughs> well, it's like... Just because you're a fan, and not, even if you don't make a profit off it, doesn't mean that the people that own the copyright are going to let you do it. <laughs> See, mean, if it they would have gone, like, them. If gone with a triangle logo, they couldn't have copyrighted it. But well, I mean, they could have done a galaxy, you know, a galaxy quest kind of thing. They could have made it similar to Star Trek, but to basically say, no, this is taking place in Star Trek. It's like, well, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, oh, they said that. <laughs> no, but it sounds like it from everything. You know, otherwise, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Are they saying it takes place in the Star Trek universe? Because they can't do that. I don't know what they're saying, but it sounds like it, you know. I'll look it up real quick. Hold on, you want me to say me a link for this also? Xnar. Now, if they called it Star Trek, like T R A C K? Star Trek. Or, this is not Star Trek, a porn parody. Which there are plenty. Yes. Uh. Okay, I got I got to pull it up here. Give me a sec here. Uh, blah blah blah. Axmarproductions dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. So there's also the um, the, the actual there there's a, a small web series called Prelude to Axnar. The working title was Star Trek Prelude to Axnar. Um, oh, there you go. Okay, so here's the biggest issue. Um, Alec Peters began work on the Axnar series in 2010. Paramount Studios traditionally allows fan-made projects to move forward just as long as they agree not to sell anything, including tickets, merch, or copies of the finished film or series. Um, they turned a Kickstarter and a fan-funding campaign, which eventually exceeded blah, 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 blah. Um. So that's uh, that's part of the issue. It is considered a Star Trek fanfic. However, I guess it looks like the reason why they're having so much issue is that there might be some like uh, like like perks that they maybe put up on their Kickstarter that now crosses it over from being simply a fan made production with no economic value whatsoever to now having an economic value because they're going forward from the short film to the long form film. I see. They're having the issue. And they shouldn't have used the, they shouldn't have used the Star Trek if they would have been like explorers in space. Right. Well I, I don't with, think that's particularly the issue. I, I think it's just because of the of the monetary value of the project now is where Paramount is having the issue because it said that uh, Paramount traditionally allows people to make fanfic and to make fan-related uh, products as long as it has no real monetary value. So are you, are you saying like they uh, they would have been cool with the type of thing that that guy was doing with the, no, the okay. X-Men or whatever? Cause no, because he, was he wanted to make it, he? No. Oh, he was making money? Yeah, he, he, was, he was selling that on like... Yeah, he had. I think he had. A, did he have a Patreon? I can't remember, but he was selling stuff on Gumroad, like the models and stuff. He was showing off tutorials and how he did it. Well, you so. were saying. I remember you were saying Disney would go after like the schools or whatever for having them. Oh yeah, that's that's an old thing. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I don't know. It might be a close case, but Paramount will probably win because they have better lawyers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. They has money. Yeah. And speaking of Disney, Ian, legal team. What? Huh. speaking of, everyone says this entire thing is gonna fucking blow over by the time it happens anyway, because it's, the Axnar Productions is probably gonna get bought out by Paramount, and then it's gonna be an actually canonized series. That that's probably what's gonna happen. And now or it's gonna get spe chilled. Speaking of Disney, Ian's next news story: Disney Infinity shuts down as Disney drops out of game publishing. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the company will take $147 million uh, write down for uh, shuttering Poise to Life Fine. Um, yeah, Disney may be enjoying a renaissance as the uh, popular cross media publisher of 
everything from Star uh, Wars to Inside Out to Captain America. Uh, that list won't include video games anymore. The company just announced it will be shutting down its Disney Infinity line of games and associated collectible toys, and it will be ending its self-published console games business altogether. Quote, quote. Uh, Disney Infinity Senior VP and General Manager John Blackburn said in a surprise announcement today that we have made a difficult decision to discontinue production of Disney Infinity from the beginning the Infinity was built for you, our fans, and I wanted to take a moment to thank you, not just for your support over the years, but for creating a community that made uh, Disney Infinity more than just the game. I saw this coming. I we promised that there would be few final retail releases of Infinity toy uh, play sets in the next two months before the line is shut down entirely. In an earnings report today, Disney said that it will write down $147 million charge in connection with the shutdown of its council business, largely due to Infinity. Uh, the company's latest earnings re report cites uh, lower results for re Infinity as far as of the reason for a slight decrease in revenues and income from its uh, consumer uh, products and interactive media division. Yeah. So they're, it's not doing so hot. Yeah, I I've, I found uh, two other reports for this one when it came out. I was going to talk about two, so I'll just drop those. There's one from uh, AnimationMagazine.net, and uh, of course Cartoon Brew had something to say about it. Oh yeah, I saw this coming like a couple of months ago. So, well, the, yeah. uh, the the Star Wars uh, release tanked. It everything else was doing pretty good, but as soon as that Star Wars line came out, it flatlined. Oh, Ben's Ben's linking the cartoon brew one. Well, uh, it was important because it lay lay off up to three hundred employees. So I think that's an important thing to note because. Yeah. You know, again, as an, you know, artists and people concerned about other people's livelihoods, it's like that's a kind of thing. Other than just the the thing being shut down, there are people that are losing jobs over it. So we hope that they get re either reabsorbed and placed elsewhere in the company, or find, land on their feet somewhere else. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Fuck there's Skylanders or fucking Nintendo probably snap them up in the Amiibo line. And there, so there's still two releases. There's Alice Through the Looking Glass this month and Finding Dory in June. But after that, uh, Infinity will be gone. <laughs> so, huh. Are you saying that Infinity is finite? <laughs> Infinity and beyond! Well, okay, what? So they said that there was going to be Lego Disney characters? So why would they do that if Lego has their uh, version of this? So that happened like a couple of months ago, because and that would be a direct compet. So they probably came up with like a contract with Lego in exchange for some of their intellectual properties, and then they use this as a ploy to uh, get some new intellectual properties that they're later going to use for some other line. Yeah, but the Lego one isn't doing so hot either. Yeah, I know, but like, it's doing better than the Disney one. I, no, it's actually was about the same. Um, a lot of people were saying that the Lego one it was just like it, it, like it's fucking Lego. This is kind of yeah. like the music game genre, like four years ago. Right. To be honest, I mean, there's, I mean, let's let's count them down. You had the Skylanders, you had Disney Infinity, you had Lego Dimensions, you have the uh, Nintendo Amiibo line. Um, there's also other stuff like called Playmation which is dead on arrival. Um, there's so many of these you know, collectible game set games that are out right now, and it's getting worse and worse. The the amount of uh, trinket, I call I call them like builder games in a way. Um, the, the Number one, the cost of uh, keeping these damn games updated is insane. Hundreds of dollars a year. Hundreds of dollars. Now, I'm not talking 200. I'm talking if you want to go, got to catch them all Pokemon style, you got to go into the 200, 300 dollar range at least. 
Oh, yeah. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> so we got some other news stories to talk about here, because uh, run a little long. Run a little long. Frank doesn't care. <laughs> hey, Frank. What? What? <laughs> so, anyway. Those... So those are Ian's news stories. I'm going to drop a few here for you. Oh. Oh. No, actually. My first one comes from Wired. Hey, Nate. Check out my Tumblr. Yeah. Hey, you may want to take a bathroom break. This is going to be a while. <laughs> my, this one comes from, from uh, Wired, and in fact, this one's actually going out for Doug. Uh, how to film a movie on your iPhone. So, <laughs> they have a... Uh, why yeah, why you recommends? Go ahead, Ian. Weekend. Maybe you could uh, squeeze that out over the weekend. But they talk about how to put together, how to put put together a rig. They got they recommend a Rode video mic, me directional microphone, sixty nine dollars, a Gobi grip type mic stand for thirty bucks, a Moondog Labs one point three three X anamorphic lens, one hundred seventy five dollars, and they 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 have a nice little just uh write down about it and then they also say that they talk about a director Sean Baker produced an entire feature film Tangerine using the iPhone 5S he opted for an anthropomorphic lens adapter made by Moondog Labs you aren't going to get the shallow depth of field usually associated with the cinematic film Baker says but once you accept that your entire scene will be in focus it becomes a big part of the film I wanted people to to see parts of LA that they don't usually see. Pro tip from Baker, if you're using a gimbal, make sure it can counterbalance the weight on your lens adapter. Mm. Yeah, I just, I just did the, uh, something similar. I was actually uh, planning on assembling my own Steadicam. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, I've seen those. Those are fucking phenomenal, and like, have you seen some of the test footage from those? Yeah, it's like some guy jogging at the pool, and like he's like doing backflips. Like, damn, <laughs> damn, son, damn. But yeah, I mean, the, the iPhone has a really good camera for all things you can do with it, and considering the portability of something like that, mm -hmm. I think I think it's interesting. It's it's an interesting age we can live in where you can make a feature film on your cell phone, and uh. Here's, a, here's another uh, camera news story. LG Action Cam lets you live stream to YouTube without a phone. Yeah, see it? Yes. I mean, can we give opinions on that, or do we have... Sure! Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, when Nate was telling me, I, just, I wasn't able to get it because I guess you were on... or I'm Since I'm on T-Mobile, but he was... I, get, I had to get a new phone... So you suggest I get that? What's it called? The, the Droid movie? Turbo Two. Yeah, that it has like a twenty-one megapixel camera on the phone. Crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, mark the time. We have officially lost Frank. That's all right. We've always lost Frank. So anyway. Oh, I my guitar. So. It sounds about pin strapping. I mean, I. So I don't guitar know. Doug, it's bass. Bass what, Frank? Uh, check out my bass. Step in the bass, big check. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on using a, a camera phone to film stuff, Ian? I mean, I think it's it's pretty cool. I mean, mine, uh, the the new phone I'm getting, which is the Note Five, it, it can it has like a 16 megapixel camera and. and it, that can also uh, capture in the raw format, which is nice, um, and it can record in 4K. So, I mean, just, I mean, considering nowadays that your phone can record a 1080 or sometimes 4K video, you know, it's like, it's like, especially I think for like you know web stuff, that's like way better than a need than we have any real reason to have it be. <laughs> But now, you know, you can see feature films being shot on that. I mean, they're, you get that hardcore Henry or whatever, where it's all just f first person. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway. I will say this, though. Um, there are some studios, and they actually do get a movie shot in a weekend. Yeah. 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 I mean. And 
it's not fantastic, but it's not terrible either. Well, you know, we, we were talking about trauma before on previous episodes, so... Anyway... My favorite. My favorite. Alright, so let's talk, let's talk about the LG Action Cam lets you live stream to YouTube without a phone. Every time I look at this, I just hear the Jackass theme song playing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The LG G5 has a new friend, a small camera that, in fact, does not need a phone at all to stream video directly to sites such as YouTube Live. The LG Action Cam is a 12.3 megapixel little camera that can capture HD ready, full HD or UHD video and 120, 60, and 30 frames per second, respectively. Live streaming, however, is limited to 30 frames per second, 720. So. That, is that base of yours misbehaving, Frank? Or you gotta, you gotta spank it like it's a naughty base? It's okay, nobody cares about bass players anyway. <sighs> I'm a really guitar player, I just felt like playing the bass. The camera is chock full of wireless connectivity with LTE, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth support all on board. Other other specs include 26 gigabytes of RAM, 4 gigabytes of memory reserved only for the camera's own OS, support for micro SD cards, gyroscope, accelerometer, and a 1400 mAh battery uh, provided up to 4 hours of full no, HD recording. Yes, Franklin. The camera is water and dust resistant. To so anyway, yeah. So the GoPro is not going to be the only one capturing footage of people on their motorcycles as they go over the cliff. I like the idea that you can do all this streaming without needing a phone. It's like, here's its own device dedicated to filming what, what's going to happen. I don't know. What do you What do you guys think? Well, so this is I love the LG. Yeah. So this is just a camera. This isn't a phone or anything. It's a camera that's not going to need a phone. It says. I thought they already had cameras that could just like add it to the web on demand. Uh, let's see. Hey, can you just mute Frankie? Hey. Uh -huh. I, Frank, yeah. how many? Yes. Hard to get him back. <laughs> Franklin, how many live interview shows just let a guy walk off and start playing guitar in the middle of the show? Okay. Uh. Been on here for like an hour. It hasn't been that long. Well, yeah. Anyway, while you don't need an LG phone to run it, in fact, one of its most important features is the ability to stream video directly to an online streaming site without a phone. Something that GoPro currently doesn't offer. If it falls under the umbrella of LG's Friends ecosystem. LG already has one camera in that lineup, the LG 360 cam, which, which lets you take 360 degree photos and videos also without a phone. Hmm. I, I, I can't even care about this. I mean, it, 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 nobody's going to use it, and you probably need some way to link it up, so you, you're, eventually you're going to need another device to link it up somehow. I, mean, I don't know. It says in the thing it doesn't doesn't need one, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably to generally operate, but you you got to do some sort of setup. If you're gonna if you're gonna live stream, you got to set up the live stream. You got to name the live stream. You know. So you don't think that that uh, standalone streamable devices are going to be a thing, Doug? You don't think it's going to be going to be a good business? Well, the thing is, though, okay, two, two major things. Number one, is it going to be close to Wi-Fi to be able to stream? And number two, if it's not, how are you going to get some sort of service to get it to stream out on the beach when you're riding your dirt bike or your four-wheeler? or a dirt bike out on out the beach? beach? You know what I mean? Yeah, you probably would have to be some kind of hot spot with yeah, the phone. There's, there's too many impracticalities that come along with having a device like this. Well, it's if you have a Verizon phone, you can have your own mobile hotspot. 
it, it sounds great in theory. I just I, I can't I can't see it correct in in execution. You know what I mean? You can have a car with a mobile hotspot drive right next to the person, and then you can see like them crash into each other. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And then it just becomes a live streaming version of Bang Bus. So moving along, so uh, have you guys heard about the uh, Amazon? Uh, is it the dashboard uh, the button that they're selling now? Press Amazon's IRL button to call a cab, brew coffee, or whatever. So the real world just got a little more push button this week. Amazon quietly listed. Uh, customizable AWS IoT buttons for sale on its website, customizable versions of its Amazon Dash buttons. The Dash buttons take the company's one-click ordering quasi-offline by letting you by letting you let your order products that's a weird typo, let you order products such as pet food, toilet paper, or caffeinated beverages by pressing an internet-connected physical button. The idea is that you'll stick little buttons wherever you store the product so that when you're running low, you you need only tap the button and bada bing, your order is in progress. Amazon sells more than 100 different buttons today, but until now, there, there's there been no way to create your own. So Amazon pitches the new AWS IoT buttons, which cost 19.95 and should be in stock May 15th, as a way for developers to learn how to use the company's various cloud services, including its IoT offering for... <laughs> for powering Internet of Things mm. devices. You can click the button to unlock or start a car, open your garage door, call a cab, call your spouse or a customer service representative, track yeah, the yeah. use of common household chores, medications or products, or remotely control your home appliances. So Yeah, we're getting more and more lazy. Happy day. Yeah, but like this isn't this isn't new technology. This is using IFTTT technology and they they've had like multiple things like this. I was going to say their button has been around for a while because I remember when they actually sent me a thing saying, hey, want our button? We noticed you bought this thing once or twice. You might want to just keep buying the shit and just pressing the button. Well, I mean, you can subscribe to a product, but the whole idea of a button, it's like, remember when we did that article about, was it Domino's? They sent you a little pizza box button and you could press the button whenever right. you wanted to order Domino's? Or well, KFC's or the thing I bought last year. You know, well, it's... Um, I, th I think uh, coming from a healthcare uh, job myself, this, like I said, reminds me a lot of our machines for uh, stocking uh, the units with um, common uh, goods. We have a little machine that every time they take one, they press a take button, and the machine knows once it's used up so many, it replenishes it. This is a similar thing, uh, just going from corporate or uh, medical use to the uh, home use, which for certain products I think it could be useful. Hmm. Well, I'm just, I just think the whole, you know, tying it into if this then that option and Internet of Things, I think that's pretty cool. Like, you know, if you know every day you're going to want an Uber driver, every day you're going to want a this or a that, why not? I was going to ask Nate, because you're into that if then that website, right? Did you hear about that uh, uh, router that they came out with, we did an article about that a little bit ago, about the router they had, like, an open source, if then and that oh. language or whatever. IFTTT. Yeah, an ITT router, where you could uh, put certain events in there and everything. Oh, yeah, I really it's like I, unfortunately, it's a, unfortunately, it's a Google router, and, you know, considering yeah. they killed off... <laughs> a, you know, home automation router system because they bought it, well, I don't know if I'm going to spend $200 on a router just because they throw something in there. Hmm. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Doug? Contributing to the laziness of the next generation. It's oh, going to be on. like Wally. -E. Hey, man. Loading couches is cool. What do you think, Frank? Did I already comment? I don't know what you said other than something about health care, something about I'm slapping a base because I don't care about being on the show. Uh, <laughs> well, you were talking about a topic that I had no comment on, so, you know. So you had to entertain yourself for five seconds. I'm sorry, yeah, Frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, here's, a t here's one you might have a topic, I mean, might have uh, some interest in. Nickelodeon's animation podcast series is here. Go ahead, Ian. What's your question? Um... 
what is what is this thing mean? Because I've seen this type of like design or whatever with like the the tide and the like the fabric softener logo on it or something. Yeah, I was just curious. Well, for Amazon, it's their dashboard button. So like when you want to order uh, some tide, you press the button and it sends an order, and then you can go to your device and cancel it if you want. But you know. Oh, uh, okay. So it's just you don't have to go to a site and go and fill out the thing. You just set it up, and it goes every time you press this button, you order a new thing of tide. That's great until your kid finds the button and goes press, 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 and you got ninety bucks. Yeah. Of and then you can go. To, then you can go to the website and cancel it. That's the thing they say in, in the setup. You won't know until the shit comes to your house. But anyway, let's talk about Nickelodeon's animation podcast podcast series. So there's also a, a sneak peek video from it when uh, this was announced. So I'll just link that YouTube video here. Uh, Nickelodeon launches Nickelodeon animation podcast series highlighting creators and talent behind iconic cartoons. In celebration of Nickelodeon's 25 years of animation, the network announced its first ever podcast, Nickelodeon Animation Podcast, now available on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and NickAnimationPodcast.com. The 20-episode weekly podcast gives voice to creators and talent who who brought to life some of the most innovative, hilarious, and heart-tugging animation in the history of television. The series will feature Nick-affiliated talent as well as animation visionaries from across the industry. Hosted by Hector Navarro, Geek and Sundry, each episode will discuss creator and talent, life stories, careers, and inspirations behind some of the most iconic cartoons. So let me get this straight. Alright, go ahead, Doug. They have a Tumblr for you to check out. Check out my Tumblr. Hey, why don't you check out my Tumblr at no one gives a <laughs> it's dot com. Anyway. So, so Nickelodeon is all of a sudden back on this. Oh, take a look at our animation history when it has basically shit on most of its standard history. Um, which, by the way, I'm still pissed off at them for closing Nickelodeon Studios. But that's besides the point. <laughs> get them, Doug. Get them. Nickelodeon Animation Podcast. You know what that's, uh, that, that stands for? N-A-P, NAP, which is exactly what I'm going to do if I start listening to that. Because they're basically trying to get back in everybody's new graces because no one gives a shit about Nickelodeon Animation anymore. The Golden Age is done. It's over. It's dead. And they're trying to resurrect it. But but Avatar and, and Legend of Korra and... and... Legends nope. Uh, yeah, that's what that's how it's The last hey. Airbender man. Yes, Frank. That was over a long time ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Who went and saw that live action movie? I can't. I can't think of a single person. Well, that's because that was an M Night Shyamalan joint. Shyamalan, la 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 la. What did we M Night Shyamalan ding dong? All right. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell this audience isn't excited about that one. So uh, let's talk about Bill Plimpton debuts his new feature mockumentary, Hitler's Folly. Oh, boy. So, Oh, boy. Plimptoons has announced the U.S. release date of Bill Plimpton's new feature mockumentary, Hitler's Folly, a merciless satire in which Adolf Hitler is reimagined as a successful animator and artist. And as a special thank you to his loyal fans, Plimpton will make film available for free download via his website. Hitler's Folly will be released for free download at his Plimptoons website on Friday, June 3rd. There will also be a free New York premiere of Hitler's Folly on Wednesday, June 1st at 7 p.m. at SVA Theater, followed by a Q&A with filmmaker Bill Plimpton. After the screening, Plimpton will also do special live drawings of a character from the film for selected fans. Which oh, he said Bill Clinton. To buy it anyway, so he's putting it out there for free. What? Doug. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, I thought I, I I just said I thought he said Bill Clinton. No, Bill Plimpton. Hmm. I, I would have been more interested if it was Bill Clinton. <laughs> I'm like Bill Clinton's an animator. I'm yeah, sure. An animator. Uh, I make cartoons. I have a Tumblr. I mean, I got a couple other links to it that I'll just post in the blog post about it because it's basically the same story and, you know, we've talked about it. <laughs> a Hitler mockumentary. Why not? Yeah, there's no one's ever done that before. Alright, well, 
Okay, I guess you guys aren't interested in that. How about we talk about the new Voltron trailer? What? You guys excited for that? Oh, nope. shit. Uh, 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 that sounds so, so enthused. New trailer. shit since forever. New trailer unleashed for DreamWorks Animation's Voltron Legendary Defender. So. Hold on, there's a 15 second animation. Advertisement. <laughs> Oh, Kung Fu Panda 3. Ooh. What the shit is that? What, what? the shit is that? <laughs> the what? fuck? No, what the shit is that? What's uh, going on? The, uh, damn it. Uh, what, what's, what's the matter, Doug? You don't I, like the new Voltron? Fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles all over again. <laughs> you done fucked it up. Uh... Damn. Well, let me ask... Let me ask Ian and Nate, since they haven't spoken much lately, what are your guys' thoughts on Voltron? Uh, well, I guess I'll be quiet even more. I'm not a big fan of it. So, on to you, Nate. I, I mean, I like the Voltron toys. I never really watched the show. Yeah. I, I watched it. I just honestly couldn't tell you much about it at all because it was in that sphere of every show was kind of like that. So it's like you had... You know, Transformers, and you had Voltron, and you had, you know, Thundercats, and I was just like, Wee! Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats! So, how about you, Franklin? Uh, I mean, I was gonna say, yeah, this is like an anime version, but the original shit was basically an anime, so it's just a reboot. Mm hmm. Uh, not really the art style I'm into, but I like like Ian or not Ian. Nate has said he wasn't really a fan of the series either. I had the toys too. I didn't watch the fucking show. I don't know any of the characters' names, so I could probably watch it ten minutes if there was a kid that had to go see it and maybe get into it. I don't fucking know. Mm. Well, I'm not and saying I'm not a fan. I just I haven't seen it. I don't know anything about the characters or not. I remember there's a lion and some other shit. And they I just really know. They just a bunch of lions form a man. Oh, it was a bunch of lions? It was a robot. Things? They were a bunch of zords that form a bigger zord. It's so, basically Power Rangers before Power Rangers, Frank. Zords? What the fuck well, is a zord? It's a mech. Because <laughs> now Power Rangers has what its the own... What fuck is a mech? <laughs> okay, now you don't know what a mech is, Mr. Anime Guy. That's sarcasm. I know what it is. The regular layman isn't going to know that. Are you there? Nah. It's a bunch of giant I robots that form a bigger giant movie. robot. <laughs> robot shit. That's the only way you got to explain it. It's all a bunch of shit. Oh, boy. No, people are stupid, Ben. They're not going to know what the fuck it is. They, people already have, don't know how to pronounce manga. It's manga, right? It's like a vase. Vaz. Thunder. 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 Oh. Do you think, what do you think? Hey, Doug, what do you think of the new Thundercats? No, no. These motherfuckers are ruining my childhood, okay? But ruining No, hold on. One, the rich, one of them came <laughs> back. Huh? One of them came back, though. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> We're hurting Dougie's poor childhood, guys. I have fucks to give. I put it in a safe and triple lock the son of a bitch because these people are stealing my childhood and bastardizing it. You know what it feels like to have your childhood bastardized, okay? Yeah. You know what that feels like? It feels like someone fucked up your fucking pinstriping, okay? It's fucking horrible. Here, here's the thing, guys. Um, Real quickly, all these reboots, yeah. they're not for you, the guy who's sitting there, you know, jacking it to your classics. They're for the well, little we, three- we, and five-year-olds that are... That, they're they're for the, the they're for the new generation that want to have something of their own and you know if you're gonna cry that they're raping your childhood over you know bringing out a new Transformers or a new Voltron I'm sorry you, I didn't know your ch your childhood was so vulnerable to people damaging it. <laughs> well, well, it's just that they don't they're not appealing to the fans. They didn't they made that call you know. I I, I just don't know. why don't they just design something new for once? Oh my God, they had. They had an idea that was actually original. Oh, man, you, 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 know, you need to be fucking hired by these fucking studio fucks. And like, wow, you get paid a million dollars to say, do something original. And I mean that. I, that's not being facetious. That's saying 
that you can actually stand in front of these people who's like, well, uh, let's go ahead and we'll bring back Ren and Stimpy and just do it in a different version. No. Someone needs to stand as fucking girls and say, fuck you, fuck your reboots, I don't want none of it. Hey, well, you, uh, you know, though, that it's all about, the, the bottom line is all about the dollar, and you make more dollars by watering shit down. So, well, I mean, no, it'd be, it'd be way cheaper to make it from, like, a new thing, because then you don't have to pay royalties to said companies that make that will charge a ton of money. Like, oh, I want to make a new Transformers. Well, I want, like, $10 million. No, do you know what you could make for $10 million? A lot. You know, yeah, but here's the thing, Nate. You could make an all-original thing for $10 million, and then it bombs. People will but go see a Transformers make- movie because they know what Transformers is. You're already buying into that name recognition. That's a business. That's a business thing. You should understand. That's not that. necessarily true. Like, okay, you can people make money on bad, bad movies, right? And it's not a reboot. Like, if it bombs, it bombs. But if it succeeds, you have a new franchise that you could water down if you decided to do that. Like, not that you should, but like, it's something original. I don't know. Like, you'd make more money on it. Yeah, theoretically, but nobody's going to, everybody would be scared. The thing about businesses that produce these things is that they're in the business to stay around, and therefore to take a gamble on an entirely new property and hope that it lands. Would you rather make an entirely new property, or would you rather put all your money in another Star Wars? Hmm. Honestly, I would rather make a new property. Yeah. Yeah, but you you don't have the the balance of trying to spend this money and not tank it. (laughs) I mean, Mars Knees Moms was a new property. <laughs> so, uh, ooh, that's uh, why you do marketing research. And, and making a really shitty Batman slash Superman movie was a, an established property that pissed off everybody. That completely changed how Warner Brothers is doing business right now. Yeah. By the way, Doug, <sighs> did you, I don't think you were. Were you on the last show? No. I don't think. So. Yeah. I didn't think so. Uh, yeah, I watched that. Uh, we talked about the Civil War movie. What did you think about that? Did Fantastic. You see it yet? Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I thought yep. uh, they they had to change a couple things, of course, because the uh, the registration act that storyline had to be tweaked and tempered. I, I liked how they integrated the newer uh, Avengers, um, and the humor was really, even though it had to be sparse. It was sparse in ways that made it interesting and made it uh, seem a little bit more humorous than it really was. Um, I, I like how they introduced like Black Panther and, and all that. Uh, I'm I'm interested to see where they go from here with you no know, the Infinity War movies. So I, I dig it. It was what well, actually pretty much met my expectations just in execution. But it actually exceeded my expectations in how it executed the storyline, because you obviously there, there are certain things you just can't do that was going on in the original, uh, the original comics, the original storyline. So. Mm-hmm. I liked how they left it essentially open ended, because the uh, the Sokovia Accord are still in order. Um, no, it wasn't like repealed like the uh, registration act was. Um, so now it's it's actually setting up a, a new type of tone for the next phase of Marvel movies. I like that. It's actually really good. Really good. Really be shoe. And by the way, um, people out there, if you don't have it already, go out and buy Deadpool on Blu-ray. Do it. Yeah, definitely. Don't, don't do it for me. Don't do it for you. Do for the future of movies, because it is the highest selling, the highest grossing R-rated movie in history behind Jesus. <laughs> Literally, the Passion Finally, of the Christ is the number one R-rated uh, draw of all time in theaters, and Deadpool is number two. Deadpool is also yeah. the highest grossing X-Men movie ever made. So, by the way, Nate, you didn't see that Civil War movie yet? Nope, not yet. Oh, okay. Dude, you gotta see that. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, it, it was. I thought it was really good. You know, it was pretty much like Avengers 2.5. That's what it was summed up as, I think. 
Well, if you're if you're mm. approaching something like Civil War, like I, I don't think it could have been an Avengers movie, honestly. Um, there, there's I had most of them in there. In the storyline for it to work out correctly to be an Avengers movie. So. Mm. Okay, I've got two last newest stories, and I'll I mean I got leaks to a bunch of them, but I'll just put those in the blog post. I'll just share the ones that matter with you guys. Uh, cloud ba- cloud based animation platform Artella is now live. <laughs> so animators from Toy Story, Star Wars, Transformers, Rango, Wall-E, and The Incredibles establish a collaborative production platform to unite creative talent around the globe. So Artella, the global collaboration platform that enables artists to make animated films, video games, and virtual reality content, has officially launched. Founded by animation veterans Bobby Beck, Carlos Baina. Bain- and Sean Kelly, Artella's end, end-to-end online production platform empowers artists to assemble teams from anywhere in the world to tackle projects of any size and scope all through a web browser. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Artella will always be free for anyone to sign up and connect with other artists and projects. Nine days post-launch, a nominal monthly fee will be charged to creators per member of their team, 10 to $30 depending on the role. Artella does not take a, a cut of collaboration compensation or in the equity or IP of the projects created on the platform. Mm. Cloud. <laughs> I don't know. What are, your, what are your thoughts, Ian? Well, I don't know. Go, go to somebody else first real quick. <laughs> Go to somebody else while I form my opinions. Frank, how about you? Hold on, I'm reading shit. <laughs> words and stuff. <clears throat> that's a lot of shit. Yeah, that's a lot of words I saw that, but I like the idea behind it. Uh, the cloud-based Artella platform allows creative teams to establish their own virtual studios and present their projects, however large or small, to a global network of collaborators that includes uh-huh. writers, directors, storyboarders, voice talent, Act animators, composers, software en- engineers, and other creative professionals working at entry level of the indu- uh, working at every level of the industry. The platform boasts integrated communication, file management, and review tools that allow for straightforward production, while also providing template-based workflows tailored to films, video games, and virtual reality content. In addition, the platform seamlessly integrates with the most widely used production software such as Autodesk Maya, Adobe Premiere, and Photoshop, and the foundries Nuke, to name a few. And and enables either online or offline work so collaborators can produce however they are most comfortable. That's a lot of shit they said there, Ben. Yes, and there's a whole lot more if you want to scroll down and read all of it. Nope, not going to do it. Hmm. Not going to do it? Well, not let me it. just ask you guys, what do you think of the idea of using the, cra- the cloud to collaborate for creatively? Because we're using the internet to all get together for this show. We're not all in the same room except for Ian and Nate. Poor <coughs> bastards. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, Doug? Why didn't this exist five years ago? Uh, I don't know. Because a lot of shit didn't exist five years ago, Doug. You know, Franklin, I wasn't talking to you. Well, who were you talking to, motherfucker? He's talking talking to the cloud. (laughs) Talking to Ben. Like, uh, seriously. Are you sure? We look a lot alike. Well, I mean, nowadays there are plenty of team. Nowadays there are plenty of team-based projects where you can have people reporting in and tracking stuff, and you know it makes sense to have stuff like this built up around for creators and artistic types and and people making games and animation and movies. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Nate? I mean, if it's another resource that you can go to, that's great. Like. If it works out, hooray! Hmm. How about you, Ian? Uh, well, I mean, well, what were some of like the highlights about this? That besides just like, uh, you know, like you could share and stuff files or whatever, and maybe screen share together or something like that. Share files and communicate. With each with with different people, you know, at different different jobs, different tasks. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's there's so much text in this one. Uh, yeah. Let's see. 
Let's see. Do, 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 do. They announced the trio founded Animation Mentor in 2005. And online, uh-huh. I don't know what Animation Mentor is. Uh, Artella was born out of the need to provide a virtual space for graduating students to collaborate with others, while other while also offering a destination for established professionals and studios to launch and com- complete projects that wouldn't otherwise be able to manage with throughout the larger larger studio infrastructure and workflow. So basically, it's a way for people online to collaborate and make things. So I'm I'm out, I'm all for that being a dude on the internet. Who would like to collaborate with other people on the internet without having to move to California or New York? <laughs> I can see there being a lot of Kickstarter projects using this. Hmm. It works. I mean, when when you really stop to think about, it, like, say, if you know, if you have a buddy from art school, or you have somebody who used to be a coworker, but you guys have a like a shared vision for a project, and you start recruiting a bunch of people, set up a Kickstarter. Hey everybody, we're going to be setting up a Kickstarter here in uh, six months. We're going to be making a good version of Kubo and the Two Strings. Fund us with yeah. fifty dollars, and we might actually be able to get it done on time. What is it? Doug's a hater. Yeah, I'm sorry, kids. <laughs> um, yeah, the Cartoon Brew article on it has has a a video showing an overview of it. It's a minute thirty. Right. So of course, of course, Cartoon Brew does. Well, of course it does because you know. All hail the brew of cartooning. <laughs> well, right. you know, one, one thing that does steer me away from this and cloud in the general in general is the fact that uh, you know a lot of people have highlighted just like the guy did in that uh, Apple article that uh, in, in a lot of the agreements and stuff the cloud providers say this and that they they could use certain things for advertising or whatever you know. Whatever is based on their servers. Well, I mean, it all depends on what you're signing up for. I mean, some stuff it's a little yeah. bit more sell your soul than others. So, like the, I think some of the Autodesk cloud stuff was like that, where you this, you know, the the amazing software that you get to use with them that's free on the cloud. It's all great and everything, except for the fact that you know whatever you upload, they can that you know like if you. If it needs to, it needs to upload something like your file or whatever, and then it can work. The software can calculate and work with it. Like there was a software called uh, Autodesk One Two Three D Catch, I think, that works on the cloud, and it, it has to upload like your three D scan to the. It's like scans things in for you using like photos and your video, I think, with your phone or whatever camera you have, and it sends like the three D scan up to the cloud, and it does all this calculation and stuff. But it I think in agreements it said that they could pretty much use your thing for like, uh, since it's stored on their servers for anything like advertising or whatever. They pretty much own it. <laughs> See that right there is an illegal contract clause. Well, I mean it's all a matter of how much you know what what that actual wording says because sometimes they just have to put that in there because that's how the stuff gets up there. They can't take it up there and do whatever and send it back to you unless they unless they get your permission because they don't want somebody to go, oh no, somebody looked at my pictures, I sent them a picture of my dick and I don't like them having pictures of it. That's all th- I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, so my last article, really quickly, is about uh, It's not funny, Ian. Not yes, funny, it dude. Actually, what? it was pretty funny. Last article, Fusion Compositing Software is now free and available on Macs. So, it's no secret in the world of, of visual effects compositing, the Foundry's Duke has led the, the pack in recent years. Both large studios and smaller facilities have adopted the popular node-based compositor and, and droves. However, other compositing tools like Autodesk Flame, Adobe's After Effects, and even the one-time industry standard Shake will still have their dedicated users. Another of these tools with a dedicated fan base is Fusion, once called Digital Fusion and made by Ion soft software, but last year, last year purchased by Blackmagic Design. Fusion has actually been around for more than 20 years, and users who don't, who haven't shipped it to Nuke, but, or who did but came back to Fusion, will swear by this compositing alternative. And now Blackmagic, known for its impressive array of color grading tools and digital film cameras, may just be starting, or ol- only just, to chip away at the foundry stranglehold. They've made Fusion free and available on Mac OS X. Well, mostly free. The 
The fully functioning Fusion 8 is is ready to download uh, right now for Windows and Mac OS 10 for no cost. That's that's certainly incredible considering the software once costs thousands of dollars to buy. Fusion 8 can also be used for any purpose. The Foundry offers a free version of Nuke 2, but strictly for non-commercial use. A more advanced version of Blackmagic software, Fusion 8 Studio, retails for US $995 and $995 and includes capabilities for optical flow image analysis for stereoscopic support so, uh, work, support for third-party OpenFX plugins and unlimited d distributed network rendering, among other extras. If you want to deploy Fusion 8 Studio to a multi-C facility, then of course those, there are multi-user licenses available at progressively cheaper prices. So yeah. So, I guess that's that's pretty cool. Um, do you mind if I also link? There was this other thing, uh, this other software that uh, I was thinking about doing an article on it, but I decided not to just so I don't do so many articles. You know, you don't want to do too many, right? Never have too many articles. More articles, more! <laughs> um... It was, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the software called Mari. Hmm? Um, Blarney? Yeah, th yeah, this is the Foundry also. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, it's a texture, working with, it's a texture painting software. Oh, okay. It's working with textures and everything. So, uh. Oh, Mari, they, okay. Yeah. And they re they're releasing a free version that's. Uh, totally open and everything as far as there's no watermarks or anything, but it's for right. not commercial use. Well. Oh, okay, so basically like they were saying with uh, that other frown and everything. Yeah, and toss, toss a link yeah. that in there. I'm sure people like uh, like seeing that in the thing because, you know, free stuff, yeah. you know, for students and people learning to use software. Why not? Well, I, I think Mar uh, the Foundry, they've been doing like a lot of free uh, software, you know? That's crazy. Mm. What are your thoughts, Doug? No horse in this race. No horse. Well, what are you talking about, Doug? You're gonna, you're gonna have to have some kind of horse because you're, you're gonna make a movie and a video game over the weekend. So you're gonna need the Mari for making textures for the video game. And you're gonna need the, the, uh, the, the fusion or whatever for the video editing. I use iMovie for my video, and as far as any type of like texture painting, like anything I would, like the, the type of vision I have for this game is you no. Know, it's this could be very basically a football game. So like, I was actually wanting to go old school and have a little bit more of an eight bit or sixteen bit type of feel to it. Um, so something like you know like texture painting would probably not serve me at all, to be honest. Um, just. Being straight up front, mm -hmm. that probably works better in one of those type of uh, games. Like, say, if you're using, um, like, say, uh, what's the name of that uh, software? Um, that uh, software. It's called that software. No, uh, if I was going to be coding in like um, Unreal, like Unreal Three, I think is available for Vita, for Vita players. Unreal Engine. Yeah, Unreal Engine. Um, yeah. I probably maybe want to use something like that for it, but it's also like the Foundry is like the non-commercial, you know. And obviously, if you're making the game, it's for commercial use, but you probably still have to pay your standard licensing uh, fees. So. Mm hmm. Well then. How about you, Nate? What do you think? I mean, I think it's great if you, you're going to give a free version of a software away for people who want to try it out or learn the software instead of having them have to pay like $30,000 for a piece of software and then find out they don't like the software, it's not what they need, or giving them a free trial. And it honestly helps people develop skills and possibly develop plugins for their said software that might benefit them in the future. Yeah, I agree. I, I wish like all the software, like I wish they would make it a, a like a law where they say like any software you use for non-commercial use should be free or something like that. You know. 
Eh, yeah, but then... <laughs> then people start using it for stuff that's technically non-commercial. Wink, wink. <laughs> does, it, does it really stop them either way, though? Well, it's like there's educational versions of software. Never stops people from using it and then selling the thing they made with it. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. Okay, do you think Sorry, it should like people like should you be able to charge thirty thousand dollars for a piece of software? If you if you have people willing to to pay that much, yes. <laughs> but like. What do you think about companies like big companies like oh the software was like a hundred dollars and then they buy up these small companies and then they're like okay all of you bought that software um, your license agreement is now over because we bought the company even though you already bought the license for your said product and then you can rent it from us yeah that stuff does suck like you know when they buy out companies yeah. well that's why some people yeah. stick to the old version I mean. There's still still some people that use you know Flash MX, <laughs> so. Well, hopefully those softwares aren't like the. They have a setup where you're like, oh yeah, you have to take the up, upgrade and or the update and, it now it's not free. Well, at least with that they'll let you know. You know, it's, I mean, some some smaller softwares, man, they'll like, hey, we decided to change the way we're structuring our buying system, and uh, now this is a paid upgrade, and we're not going to tell you till after you already uninstall the old version. <laughs> That's always fun. Yeah. Mm. That's all by omission. Well, anyway, it looks like Frank's gone off to uh, do something. So... Did we want to jump into trivia without him, or what do you guys think? We can give him a minute here. I mean... On his black screen. Yeah. Um, actually, I thought there was... A, I was, there was something I was going to ask. I, I forgot. Um, I don't... I don't we can argue. We can go... We could go back around in circles more with the Apple thing. <laughs> nah. Oh. Is that something you really want to do? No, that's okay. So, I don't know. I was ready to get Jerry Springer in here. This thing getting kind of fun. Jerry, Jerry. Maury, Maury. Yeah. So, seen any good movies lately, guys? <laughs> yeah, the Civil War. Other than Civil War. Deadpool. I, I, other than Deadpool. Well, well I, I did see the, the Batman vs. Superman, and I, I was going to say, like, it, I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, damn. Oh. Looks like booty is booty. <laughs> booty, 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 right in every well, what What were you saying was the problem with it? Like, why did it... Like, uh, what do you th where do you think they went wrong? Everything. The fact that they had to bring in uh, Batman to make a, a Superman sequel. The fact that they had to um, completely fuck up half of the mythology that comes with Superman. Um, the, the fact that they already brought in Doomsday and basically bitched him out. The fact that the, the guy who played, who's a... Um, a Luther, that's not Lex, that's Lex's son, Alexander, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, wasn't he, isn't he basically, Superman? They basically bitched out Superman to Batman yet again. Um, the fact that essentially they took all the humor out of that movie, the fact that they did not listen to what anybody actually wanted from the movie and just did whatever they wanted, which has now affected all of these other movies that they were going to be coming out with because they wanted to make these super hyper-realistic, dimly lit, no soul, no character type of movies, and all of a sudden they're surprised because people, they'll go out and see it the first week or two, and all of a sudden when the attendance goes from all the way up here and then <sighs> they wonder why. They, they, they fucked up. They know they fucked up, and now they're trying to run damage control. That's the reason why you've got Ben Affleck doing another Batman movie, because 
Ben Affleck is a good actor. He's a good director as well. So he's actually made a, a Batman movie that's going to be worth seeing. Um, there's a reason why you don't see another Bat or another Superman movie on the docket right now because they fucked over that franchise. And I and I'll go on the record as saying I'm not a DC guy, but Man of Steel was a fantastic movie. They it, it hit all the points where it needed to hit. It was a really really well done Superman movie, and I'm not a Superman fan, but I really really liked Man of Steel. It's oh yeah, just, I liked it. Like that battle scene with the uh, the satellite. He hit him with the satellite. I thought that was. Yeah. Well, yeah. If it's, anyone ever wants to know, buffalo chicken soup is a terrible idea. Okay. Well, my, my favorite scene was when he was fighting all three of them next to, by the IHOP. It's. But it's, I mean, it's I, the fact that they they had so much potential with this movie, and they decided to cash it out because they wanted to hyperdrive a Justice League movie. Yeah, I was going to say that you think it was just an excuse. Yeah, I was going to say that. It seemed like a Justice League point, a sad attempt at a a Justice League point five movie. Well, they did did set up that Batman movie that's going to happen before this one came out. So that was already in in the Tumblr. Now, the fact that they're going to probably distance it from the Batman v Superman, I don't know. (laughs) Well, I, I have a question for Doug, though. Like, what did he... What was you saying about they bitched out uh, the Doomsday? What was wrong with him? I mean, I thought you looked kind of cool, I guess. They they took Doomsday from being this big badass from outer space. Doomsday had nothing to do with Zod, had nothing to do with Luther. Zero. Zip. Zilch. It took something that was iconic. You know how many, uh, you know how many um, comic books I own? I own one. See if I still have it over here. I might have put it away, but I think I still have it over here. Oh, here it is. That right there. It's the only comic book I really own. This is it. They took this. They took this. And they said, this right here, one of the best storylines that ever existed in the Superman universe. Really? Yeah, true. Really? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they said this right here, this never happened. Okay. You think that movie you... was a collective double middle finger to anybody who wanted a decent Superman 2. Well, the, the thing is, is, I didn't even know that much about Doomsday, so I guess that's why I don't. It's not too bad to me, I guess. I would rather wow. watch. I would rather watch the Superman Doomsday cartoon that they made than watch that again. Or actually, I are than to even watch it because I haven't seen it. But I read the spoilers. I knew everything that happened because I wasn't going to waste my money on it because I knew what they were doing. I'm going to go yeah. see Suicide Squad later this year because Suicide Suicide Squad looks fucking fantastic. It looks great. It looks way better than Batman vs Superman ever did. We heard they were doing reshoots to add more humor to the film. Yeah, because Batman vs. Superman had zero heart and zero character. And I'm sorry, the the Suicide Squad deserved to have humor in it because you're watching a movie full of bad guys. The bad guys like to quit. It, it, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit and watch uh, a bad guy movie that has 100% all seriousness. You know, Why are you every, so serious, single, Doug? every single good bad guy has a bit of humor kind of embedded in its in its character and its DNA in some way, form, or fashion. Whether it was Two Faces' a humorous look at how he viewed justice, um, the Riddler thought it was funny because he was more intelligent, and outsmarted people. The Joker found damn everything funny. So you're saying they're funny because they're like. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's well, when you when you talk about uh, characters like that, there is this this little this little kind of glisten of humor in in how they do business. You know, bad guys, really effective bad guys, have these kind of moments where you almost identify with them to a point because of the humor. So tell you know, us how funny Doomsday was, Doug. 
Doomsday wasn't really that kind of a bad guy. Doomsday was a slash and quick, I'm here to fuck your shit up and just destroy everything. Doomsday isn't more remembered for being a really good adversary. It's remembered for being a, uh, an accessory to a fantastic storyline that branched out into four different ways. I remember Doomsday being sold on the Home Shopping Network with the, with the hologram cards. Here you see, here you see Superman lying dead because this guy broke his back. And <laughs> oh man, Doom, Doomsday was more of an accessory to a really great storyline. He's not remembered was, for a great villain. The Joker, was face, the Riddler, um, yeah. of course, you know Harlequin, you know uh, Poison Ivy. Those are remembered for being really, really fantastic villains and classic villains. And those all have a little bit of humor and vibe in it, you know? Well, I will say the Doomsday is definitely different than what I remembered from some of the, like, a couple of the cartoons that I have seen of him is, like, he was more of, like, a human form. He was, a, like, as monstrous. He could talk and, and he was intelligent, I guess, you know? It, it just, it's just, like, a dumb everything monster. Everything they try to do with that movie... Yeah, it's Batman. Yeah, it's Superman. Yeah, it's gonna sell. And and then all of a sudden, when the money dropped off, you know, you got people holding the bag. And then you no, wonder why people hold the bag. Well, well, why do, you, do you think the? Uh, I mean, just the idea of them fighting each other, I don't think is a bad one because, like, look at the Civil War. I guess they were trying to sort of do that same type of thing. I guess. Well, they're, they're trying to replicate certain things in the comics as it pertains to Batman and Superman. Because Batman and Superman have fought before. And part of the reason why DC is in such a downstretch right now is because we've seen that so many times before. And I believe in pretty much all but maybe one instance, Batman beat Superman. But we all know that all, ba all Superman has to do is crack... Uh, Bruce Wayne in the jaw once, he breaks his neck, and then the fight's over. You know, it's all about Batman being more intelligent than Superman and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And we're, the the people are a little tired of seeing the whole Batman versus Superman type of bit because of that and because of how many times that they bitched out Superman to Batman. Um, when you talk about how they've done it, like you go back to like Injustice, we just saw this type of a thing with Injustice, the video game, and then the comic book that uh, was a compliment to the video game. And the video game's great. I own the video game. But that was just the most recent version of there being a Batman versus Superman type of story arc in the comics that has now shifted its way into the movies. And people are really sick, sick and tired of that. People wanted another Superman movie. Uh, and actually, a, a really good Superman movie, like, um, you know, dare I say, Superman 2, like from back in the 80s. It could have been a fantastic uh, dynamic between, you know, a Clark Kent Superman and a Lex Luthor. That, that right there, another classic villain that could have been built on and improved upon and a relationship built. Oh, you're, you're saying you long for a you long for a Superman movie where he battles Lex Luthor? Heaven forbid we see we ever get to see that on the silver screen. <laughs> well, but I'm, have we seen a movie where he fights anybody but Lex Luthor at this point? There's a reason why you don't hear people bitch about Batman versus the Joker because those two adversaries in the span of comic books to movies are in a lot of ways timeless. And and, and that basically the only adversary that Superman ever had that had that type of a staying power and lasting power was Lex Luthor. It's because they're arch nemesis. Yeah. Exactly. They are built to be this. It's like um like what Joker said to Batman in a, a Dark Knight, um, I think you and I are destined to do this forever. Those are the type of relationships and uh, honestly those things have to be built upon anyway because they're so ingrained into the story arcs and the history of those of both the hero and the villain so what do you think Frank 
Well, before he gives gives his comment on it, this, I will say, uh, I will definitely agree with Doug. I'm like the Lex Luthor. Like he sucked. Like wasn't he like the guy from Superman or something? That was a guy from the Social Network, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's that little. I thought Lex Luthor was at least a little bit more tough than that. You know, like he's just a little kid. You know. That's not Lex. That's not Lex. Yeah. How about you, Franklin? You seem awfully interested. Let's cut to oh. Frank's cam now, and uh, let's all admire Frank. He's a. Uh, Yeah. 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 So, uh... We were waiting for you uh, to get back so Superman we could do trivia. Yeah, that's a fucker. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I thought you were rambling, rambling, rambling. Would you guys watch a fight between like Lex said, Luthor and Batman? No. That could be a very interesting combination. Eh... Uh, I've seen Justice no. League Unlimited. I'm good. <laughs> You know what I would see, though? Some trivia. <laughs> I see. Yes, yes. Yes. So, is that, are we going to play the outro for the news, Ian? We, right. we, never, we never did play. Ah. And, and now it's time for the trivia tune. You want to get some uh, trivia going now, please? Yes. Gonna lose his belts. Yeah. Please don't. Uh, oh boy. Okay, I gotta get my trivia up here, which I don't think. I'm pretty sure everyone's already seen my new, the damn trivia where I have the plus and minus buttons added to it. <laughs> Makes a lot easier. It's all fancy and shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Frank, what what uh, topic do you want? Well, wait. Should, should uh, we let Nate pick the topic? Because it's uh, he hasn't been on the show in a few, has he? So, wait. Who has the belt currently? Uh, Franklin has this belt right here. What what that what belt is that then? Uh, that that one. World Heavyweight Championship, and this is the NXT. Championship, a belt that I currently own. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. We should, instead of rambling on about that Superman shit, I was gonna ask Doug what uh, what was his opinion on that that uh, cartoon thing, the wrestling cartoon. Because you did that, but then you had to dip out. You were gonna do that, but then you had to dip out or, like wake at the end. Which cartoon? The camp wrestling one. Oh, yeah. I've seen the first two episodes, and it is damn hilarious. Um, matter of fact, it it's uh, it's done by the Seth Green um, uh, the animation company that he founded, or, I guess, or is a uh, is a member of. Um, but uh, it's 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 actually an adult. It's actually rated TVMA. It's the only specific TVMA item on the WWE Network. So if anybody goes out there and watch it, if you're a kid, they have a don't network. Watch it. Yeah, Frank, they have a uh, network. Yes. Uh, you should know, geez. Frank, for nine ninety nine a month, you have access to thousands of hours of content. But um, and and weirdly enough, or like, nothing a month. Wrestling or uh, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling here too. But uh, but yeah, it's it's I, an adult. <laughs> Go ahead. Problem, No, go ahead. No, it, it, it's an adult-themed show about uh, Vince McMahon being the camp director. Uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon are the camp counselors, and all the rest of the wrestlers are little kids. 
It's it is so damn hilarious. I cannot even tell you. All right then. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say I watched Hannibal Burris's uh, Nef- uh, Netflix uh, comedy special, and he was talking about how like his dad just got into the wire, and he's like. I can't make fun of him for getting into shit late. He's like, I discovered Jimi Hendrix because Hulk Hogan used to walk out to his music. And uh, he's like, and now I found out Jimi Hendrix is dead and Hulk Hogan's racist. My whole world's crumbling. All right. Uh, so anyway, Nate, that when you said Hulk Hogan. What's your, uh, what do you want to do for trivia tonight? Nate, we're going to let you pick since you haven't been on the show in a few. Aquaman. Okay, we're gonna let Frank pick because Nate obviously oh, can't on, do anything but troll. Come on, come on, come on! Aquaman sucks. All right, all right. Yeah, come on, check out Aqu- I want to see if there's a quiz on Aquaman. Well, I'm sure there is. I'll tell you what. How about we do? Uh, you want to do like? Who wants? Who cares about choosing a trivia? Because I could give like five questions to each person. But how about how about we do a Batman trivia and a Superman trivia? <sighs> Everybody knows about those two, but nobody knows about Aquaman because okay. nobody cares. Yeah, about so it's it. so it's going to be let's all pull stuff out of our butts, which is every other trivia we do. Well, what do I'll tell this you? This whole show is the pull stuff out of our butts podcast. Welcome to the Buttcast with your host Frank. Welcome to pull stuff out of our Buttcast. All right, all right, this is what we're going to do. I'm okay, your butt host, Ben. Welcome we'll to the Alex Wilson podcast with Franklin. Which, we'll, which, we'll do five questions: Aquaman, five of Batman, and five of Superman. Okay. Okay. Sure. All right. Okay. How do you know I'm not an Aquaman aficionado? Because nobody's an Aquaman aficionado. No one's an Aquaman aficionado. Not even Aquaman's mom Aquaman is an Aquaman, Aquaman, Aquaman aficionado. <laughs> Watch, there's actually no th- nothing on Aquaman. Aquaman trivia. Uh, Quiz of the King well, of the it's... Seas. It's difficult. Nice. Well, question nice. number one. Does anyone care about Aquaman? <laughs> All right. What? All right. Nate, you'll be reading these questions off because they're your... Aquaman's your favorite comic book character now. Let's, uh... Read the question off. I did. I read it to myself. Read it for the audience. <laughs> oh, that wasn't part of the original agreement. It's a fucking audio podcast, Nate. Uh, I see. Or somebody else can read it. I'll read it again. Listeners at home. Okay, I read it. I'll do Nate, it. sit down. Okay. Then just, just, just read all the questions because it's not like uh, Batman and Superman was anyone's what is Aquaman's Atlantean name? Orin, Garth, Arthur, or Namor? Ian, this one's yours. Okay. Um, Namor? Orin? Namor. I'll say Orin. Okay, so we're both... Nate? So far, we're Arthur. Saying, you're saying Orin? He said Arthur. <laughs> You said Arthur. Hey, what did you choose, Nate? You gotta say that. So, right. C. Oh, uh, C? Yeah. Is okay. that, like, I can't, I don't have that great of eyesight. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah, doesn't that say Arthur? Yeah. Okay, and the answer? Oh, Warren. So, Frank, Frank and I got that one. His American name is Arthur. Dang. What is the name of Aquaman's biological father in the post-crisis continuity? Is it Tom Curry, Arthur Curry Sr., Atlan, or Volko? This would be me, huh? Post-crisis continuity. I'm going to say Atlan. I'll go nuts and say Volko. Nate? Volko. I say Arthur Curry Sr. Me too. And the answer... Atlan! None of us get it! I know, I got it. None of us... I got it. 
Then get it. <laughs> <laughs> if you got it right, you ought to Aquaman. True or false, in his Golden Age incarnation from More Fun Comics, Aquaman has was a synthetic being created by a scientist. Doug, this is yours. I love how it says hint one word, but it's a true or false question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to pick or false. No. Um, false. Nate? I'm going to go with true. Uh, yeah, false. That's not um, one word, Nate. I'm going to go with false. I'll piss everyone off and go with true. Okay, so let's see what... Oh, it was good. true. Uh, Nate and Frank got that one? Is that... I'm asking, Ben. I did not get that one. Uh, uh, Frank got well, it. Uh, Frank, got, Frank is the only one who got it that time. Oh, okay. God. All right. What is the term for Aquaman's empathy among sea creatures? The clear, fish speak, the wave, ichthyosis. Ichthyosis? Ah, whatever. Isn't the clear what you take to pass a, a drug test in professional sports? Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. This would be Nate. I'm going to go with uh, fish speak. Frank? I say fish speak as well. Ian? Um, yeah, I mean, that sounds familiar, so I'll say the same thing. I'm going to say ichthyosis, because I can't say it in real life, so I'll just pick it as an answer. <laughs> ichthyosis. Uh, I'll go with the wave. The wave. Do you hear the wave? The wave's talking to me, man. And, and the answer... Click. Uh, the the clear. clear. I was going to say click on the clear. Uh, if a lobster is boiled alive, Aquaman can feel its pain. So wait, he can feel all the pain of all the, of all of the animals? Wouldn't he be like the worst superhero ever? Oh, somewhere someone is beating a seal. <laughs> Alright. Oh, my the worst superhero my ever. Alright, last Aquaman question. Where was Mera, Aquaman's wife, from? Earth's surface, another planet, Atlantis, or another dimension? Frank, this would be you. Who, whose turn is it? Cheers, Frank. Oh, you cut out. All I heard is it's you, and I'm like, I say Atlantis. Mm. I'm going to say Earth's surface. I'll say Atlantis as well. I will also say Atlantis, but I didn't know he had a wife. I bet um. you divorced him. Oh, you're the aficionado, motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't say that. Ian? You did this! You did this! This yeah. is your fault! <laughs> Look what you did. I'm going to say this is going to be like a Little Mermaid type of thing, so I'm going to say the Earth's surface. And the answer... <laughs> Another dimension! <laughs> oh, we all got that wrong. Our dimension caused her to gradually go insane. Oh, sure, okay. that's what he told everybody. I bet it was him. So you didn't get that one, Ben? Crazy. Nobody got that one. Mm. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Now it's time for questions. Batman. Now time for a good quiz. <laughs> okay, we'll do... Yeah, we'll do Batman. I'm sorry, would you guys rather learn something doing a quiz, or would you rather no. just... Not when it comes to Aquaman. Yeah. Da, 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 
I don't, at least. Well, every time I do a quiz that I've never, I don't know anything about, I learn all the answers. Uh, but then you forget them when we do it again later. No, not necessarily. Okay, so we we pretty much all know Batman, so... I'm so what was Aquaman's sure father's name about. in the post? Well, let's see here. Uh, we should do Batman Forever. It's the worst one. <laughs> I thought they said it was Arthur Senior, but I don't remember that answer. Oh! oh. I remember because I got that one. It was Atlan. See, you remembered. Yeah, because I got it right. Because I'm that good. Yeah, he doesn't learn. <laughs> See, you learned something new. No. Oh, so anyway. We gotta do. This. We gotta do Tomorrow Batman. Morning, which which Batman it. version are we gonna do a quiz on, guys? Oh, let's do Batman, Batman and Robin because it sucks. Batman be armed. Batman and Robin. I would. I like Batman Beyond, but that one's average. I say uh, this. Um, the uh, original movie, Batman. Uh, Batman 89? Yeah, it's yeah. tough. Why not? Alright. I, I, I did see that like a long time ago, but... 89? 89! That's not right. Batman, uh, the Joker from 89. How many pounds does Vicky Vale tell Batman that she weighs? 108 pounds, 120 pounds, 102 pounds, 110 pounds. Ian, this one's yours. Oh, Jesus. I hate these questions. Um, I'm going to say, you know, she's lying, so I'll say 102 pounds. Mm, I'll go with 108 pounds. 108 I'd say 102. I'm going to go with 110. Frank knows he, he's like She's probably going to say the lowest one. She's probably lying. And the answer... The girl. Uh, we got it! Okay, so who got that? Did you say that one, Ben? I said that one, and Doug said that one. What is the crime boss's name that the Joker kills in order to take over his business? Carl Grimson, Jack Napier, Alexander Knox, William Borg. This would be me, huh? Yeah. Jack Napier? Carl Grissom. Mm. Carl Grissom. Nate? Um, I want to say uh, Jack. Okay, I'll go with the same thing. Is that everybody? Okay. And the answer, Carl Grissom. So who got Jack that? Jack Napier is the Joker in that movie. Ah. I see. So Frank and Doug got that one. Carl nice. Grissom. Baby! According to Bruce Wayne, why was Alfred so important to him? Alfred taught Bruce everything he knows. Bruce could not find his socks without Alfred. Bruce would, would have been an orphan without Alfred. Alfred was like a father and a mother to Bruce. This would be Doug. Bruce, Bruce would have been an orphan without Alfred. I'm going with the same. I as well. Well, if all the cool kids are saying it, I will also go with Bruce would have been an orphan. Hey. I'm going to say Alfred taught Bruce everything he knows. All right, let's find out. Let's find out. Nope. Bruce could not oh. find his socks without Alfred. So nobody got that one. I taught Bruce everything he knows. Because that's hilarious. Which actress which was originally cast as Vicki Vale? 
no one else, it was Kim Massinger the whole time. Annette Benning, Michelle Pfeiffer, or Sean Young? Nate, this would be you. Um. B. B. Annette Benning? I'd say Annette Benning as well. A B. Yeah, I was going to say Annette Benning. I'll say Sean Young. Alright. And Ian? I'm going with Doug. Okay, let's find out. And the answer, Sean, Sean Young. Young. Okay, last of the bad man. What was the name of the country where Vicky Vale had been take, taking war pictures? Vietnam, Costa Rica, they never say, Corto Maltese. Well, this would be Frank. Uh, Costa Rica? Ian? Um... I'm going to say they never said it. I'm going to go with Corto Maltese. Doug? Corto Maltese. Uh, did they go with one? I no. did not. D. D? You going with them? Uh, Corto Maltese. Doug, Nate, and I prevail. <laughs> yes, we did. What the fuck is that? Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's an island country in Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. Now for some Superman trivia. Yep. He's leading right now. Uh, you and I are tied at four, I believe. We fucking suck, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Superman's up next. I'm told it's going to win this one. Yeah. And you get minus five points because he said that. He said, Haters gonna hate. Yeah, done. Get out. <laughs> Let's see, taking the quiz on Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, Superman comic books, that's easy. Superman 2's average. Whoa, 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 go up, go up. Do the Lois and Clark, because... Do that one. Oh my Superman. gosh. Superman is... You got the choosing one, man. Did I? Yeah. Did I? Well, that one is tough, but... <laughs> Well, we have an aficionado. We had an Aquaman aficionado, and look where that took us. I didn't say I was an off. I said I could be an Aquaman aficionado, for all you guys know. And you guys uh, you're knew not. that I wasn't an Aquaman aficionado, so good job. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we could tell. Well, the, the Lois and Clark, that, that doesn't count as Superman. Are you many sure? People's eyes. Oh, you don't like Dean Cain? <laughs> Just like but it's the new Superman. Adventures of Superman. Um, yeah, it's the new Adventures of shit. Just pick one <laughs> and let's go. Do that one. Do that one. Do that one. <laughs> no, you got you got to choose one, man. Well, you don't want everybody to catch up. I don't, you know, Nate, I don't want to do a quiz where everybody's just trying to guess. How do you know I haven't seen every episode of that? Well, I don't want to do a quiz where everyone's guessing and you know all the answers, though. That's not fair. Well, how do you know I, I haven't seen half of them? I'm just BSing. Just pick one. Don't be a dude. Kick his ass, see bass. Oh, man. Um, well, I was thinking about going with the one that's just Superman the, mo the movie. That one's average. I don't know what you think, Ben. Whatever. I'm going to whoop all y'all anyway. Find the toughest one. Find okay, I'll put Superman 2 quiz for diehards. Alright, Superman 2. I think that's an even-handed one. We'll all... It'll be... Yeah. yeah. I think we're all on the equal ground with this one. Who is the keeper of the archives on Krypton? Superman's grandfather? The teacher of planet Earth? Superman's mom, Superman's dad. Ian, this one's yours. Uh, 
Uh, Superman's bad. Hmm. Keeper of the Archives. Can't... I'm going to say the teacher of planet Earth. Hey, Superman's dad. Superman's dad. Superman's dad. Uh, Superman Superman's mom. mom. We all got wrong. <laughs> oh well. Dance. Still not a thing. Oh, it is. Who played General Zod? Hint: two words. Only the correct spelling is used. Nothing else will do. Spelling is what? X E X something T. Uh, all right. Um, example. I guess that was supposed to be an example, but it got cut off. I don't know. Uh, General Zod was played by crap. I can never remember actors' names. I don't think he was played by crap, man. I don't. <laughs> you don't know. Uh. I don't know. You go before Zod. I know. We can just skip this one. Well, does anybody know who played Zod? Google. Google isn't playing, Nate. No, I am. How do you know? He says as he taps on it with his thumbs. We'll just skip this one. Terrence Stamp. Ah. Okay. Who was Lex I don't, Luthor? I don't see how their example was. What is Lex Luthor and Otis's cell number in prison? 294, 249, 383, or 338? 8675309? Okay, so, and this would be. 8675309. Um. It's a different kind of cell number, guys. I want to say 249. Oh, I say 294. I'll say 383. Yeah, actually, I was thinking about it. I thought it had some kind of 3 in it or something. I'm going to go with 383 as well. All right. 249. I got it. I got it. Is that your answer? Yeah. Nope. 383. Yeah. That's Doug and Ian. At Niagara Falls, when the little boy fell... What was the name of the ship that was shown? Uh, Mist of the Maiden 3? Mist of the Maiden... F is that 5 or 4? That's Ma six. 6. Oh, I mean 6. Uh, but, uh, six. Of course. Ma maid Maiden of the Mist 5 or Maid of the Mist 4? And this would be Doug? Um, uh, Mist of the Maiden 3? I don't know. Shit. I say 3. Uh, the last one, Made of the Mist 4. I'm going to say Made of the Mist 5. C. So you know what C is yeah. also. And the answer, Made of the Mist 4. So that I, was you, Ben? Yeah, I know that one because all the ships on Niagara Falls are Made of the Mists. Hmm. So. There we go. That's. What was the name? No, no, we got six because we skipped one, remember? What was the name of the hot dog stand on Niagara Falls? Don's Dogs, Clemens Hot Dogs, Super Duper Hot Dogs, or Super Hot Hot Dogs? Nate? Super Duper Hot Dogs. <laughs> I'm going to say Don's Dogs. I'm going to say Clemens. I'll also say Don's Dogs. Oh, come on, you don't think it's super duper hot dogs? I think that's pretty awesome, but I don't think they used it. <laughs> yeah. You don't think they used super with the hot dog name in the Superman movie? This was only the second one. I don't think they'd reached that point yet. <laughs> um, I'm going with Clemens Hot Dogs. And is I that the one? That's the one Frank went with, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, a super, super duper hot dog. 
Nate got that one. Yeah, Nate. Right. That okay. makes for Nate's second point. <laughs> and finally, who who played non? Hit three words. Don't forget the apostrophe. There are only two variations in the sp up. Okay, we're skipping this one too. <laughs> yeah. Jack O'Harlan. Yeah. All right. What is the name of the town that the Super Trio first take over? Haley, Idaho, East Houston, Idaho, Boise, Idaho, or Cora Ad Dallin, Idaho? Frank? Cora Dallin, Idaho. I'm going with Boise. Me too. I'll go with Haley. I'm going to go with Boise as well. And the answer... East Houston! Come on! I got that. So now Doug and I are tied at five. So... That means you guys split the belt. Now we have to go for the last one. It's going to be between, Nate, between Doug and I. What is the name of the motel in the town that the Super Trio first took over? Comfort Inn, Holiday Inn, Hilton Inn, Red Lion Inn. Red Lion. It's only only Doug and I are playing because we're the only ones tied. Or could it be the Hilton Motel? Or could it be the Holiday Motel? Or the Comfort Inn Motel? Doug, which one do you think it is? I'll go with the Holiday Motel. I'm going with Red Lion. And the answer is Holiday oh, Motel. Yeah. Doug squeaked by to defend motel. his belt. Motel. Holiday Now, Doug, remember, this wasn't a title match. Um, I have my rematch coming from losing my title. So yeah, that was my that was my contract mandated rematch. So I am once again your undisputed champion of the world. However, Frank, Frank Congratulations. Does, Frank does get a rematch. So What do you think I'll about think. that, Frank? Frank's like, I just want to go here, home and with my wife. <laughs> He's like, I just want to go I home with my family. I just want to see my family. Eat your sandwich, Dave. Shut up. My family. Shut up and eat your sandwich, Dave. Quit crying. There's no crying in wrestling. Anyway. So, All right. Doug, do you have any, uh, first, that jingle. Uh, any kind of speech oh. or anything? In this world, there nope, are... Nope, it's all done. And there are losers. And ladies and gentlemen of the internet, let me tell you one thing right now. I am a winner among losers, okay? I am the champion. I'm the undisputed champion. And let me tell you what perks that comes with. It comes with these sweet belts. It comes with these sweet guns. And ladies and gentlemen, if I want to, it comes with your sweet girlfriend. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your night. Check out my you heard, you heard it right here from Doug's mouth. He is the winner of losers. So of all the losers, he is the loseriest. So congratulations, Doug. Um, I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank everybody for. for the, I'd like to thank everybody for the part they played in today's show. I'd like to thank thank uh, Ian for manning the the uh, news stories and handling the trivia such that it was. I'd like to thank Nate for for pushing it along and providing. I don't have my ticket to the gun show, Doug. I'm sorry. I like I I'd like to thank Frank so, for. So I uh, you don't have any pit oh, Is that so you're more aerodynamic than you fight? I, I like Please, to thank I, I like, like to thank Frank for uh, putting his guitar away. <laughs> Doug, can, when you when you're doing with that with your arms, can you like shake them or whatever? I'd like to thank Doug for being so humble. I mean, I don't know how he manages to come out here and get on the show, and be so okay with it because he's such a, a shy, timid man. I know, and. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I just want to thank everybody for coming on the show in general. It's been a fun night. 
it's been a fun time. Fun time. You know? So, with that all said, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and until next time, we'll see you on the other side. Check out the double nerd. NoRidesProductions.com. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash NoRides. Hey, why don't you check out my Tumblr at norides.tumblr.com.